churches seem to be a little bit different time. The music's going a different time. It's not bad though. All within Close. the few minutes. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs amending or change on the agenda? Not that I know. Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Public comment to after the appointments. Okay. Just because that really bugs me. I just feel like if people made an appointment, they should keep them on time. And if they didn't, then they can vote the half a week. Totally agree. I think that this is rude. Some of us were like a half an hour, an hour late, and these four people that made an appointment because they had busy lives, and then my something's change. We have four minutes. Is there any public comment? <laughs> <laughs> well, we will it take longer than four minutes? <laughs>
turn around and sound like they were fine with it, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. But you already sent them the check. They actually have a we have an with them just ongoing, so they, they oh. already have money. Okay, so that's so excellent. excellent. So we'll we'll uh, I'll have Pam um, email it up. Yeah. So you have to it and all that, so that way they'll be there. But thank you for calling. I just wanted to grease the wheels a little bit just in case you didn't want to. Yeah. And I'll have to Just the details on the application is to um, you know, really just piggyback with the, the band shell uh, concert on the green series, which uh, right now the, the uh, dates of the events are the 15th, 22nd, and 29th of July, the 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th of August. I read that too fast. I can say it again. <laughs> yes. As I was halfway through it, I, I'm not used to it. You know. so, so it was the uh, 15th. 22nd and 29th of July. And then the 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th of August. So those are the current <coughs> event dates. And then the hours of operation would be 6 to 9. So the concerts start at 6, not 7? I think that what they've applied for is to have um, to be able to oh, set up and operate a little bit before. And, before, right. and, and then the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. um, And then just you know, with this um, application, there are certain directives that have to be met, um, as well as um, state and federal guidelines that you should be well adverse, probably more than we are. Um, but the you know the top six direction directives on here really is uh, to submit to the town or the clerk an approval, um, follow all the liquor control laws locally, um, must have a defined area of serving for serving and consuming alcohol. So there, and it has to be designated by some sort of barrier that's like typically you know the beer fest so you don't have like either the uh, barrier fencing or some something that you can designate people. Um, safely. What are you going to use? Um, we have a couple of options on the table, but we were thinking just some basic, um, something we can just, some spice we could just hammer, some grass, um, straight, some, uh, what's that, the construction sure, tape. Survey tape, yeah. Survey tape, yeah, something like that. Um, if, if we want a physical barrier, people can't walk through or we've got a bunch of cones. Like so whereabouts on the, on the property? It's pretty much the, the boundary of the grass, so we would put barriers up. Basically, <coughs> ban chill green area. Yeah, exactly. Just on the lawn, uh, not on the parking lot. And we would be telling everybody. So, church parking lot to the street front edge to the. Yeah, they let you do that with an area. Yeah, there's no. Uh, oh, I, I was going to say there wasn't a set here, so I was curious. Yeah. About that. Mm -hmm. I did not. Okay. There's no particular limit. It's just they, we need to keep it that it's a designated area. Yep. So, you know, that's, if there's concerns about that, we can sort of make it smaller. Well, the thing we talked about last time um, was having, making sure that we only had a certain number of people there, you know, at the concert, so they have to be able to spread out. So, yeah. keeping your area, you know, under control, but allowing for everybody else to be able to spread out. Yeah. 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 And, you know, important and, thing. And what's kind of unique to this that is probably going to put a little bit more responsibility on on your business. The normal is you know, normally when these functions are going on, you know, uh, the beer tent, let's say, is confined to a really small area of that piece. You know, it might be a 10 by 10 squared off area where you get a drink and, you know, stand there and watch the concert or something. Mm -hmm. But in this case, with the COVID and spreading out and taking that type of ground, is, you know, you, you're going to be responsible for all alcohol that is either coming in or going out of that boundary. It's a pretty uh -huh. large. Boundary to uh, people won't be allowed to buy a drink and then walk around on our property. Well, you can't leave a band shell there. No, no, I mean, that's put an area there. Yeah. That's all town property. Right. So, 
So the band so, uh, so in other words, somebody can bring in beer and you're not doing no different. Well, yes, that's true. I mean, we would know what we we brought in and what somebody else has brought in. I mean, I would, I would yeah. So in other words, uh, it's open drinking there for anybody that wants to bring their own beer and drink. No, it says it, it says you've got a defined area for serving and consumption. Yeah. So it'd be kind of like what we had to do over at the depot there, where you had you couldn't leave this area. You had to stay in this area. You couldn't just wander around. So what, what's your what's you your want? boundary towards the bench? Right. What's that boundary like? I was I was sort of I was assuming it would be toward the stage. Uh, I was I was thinking this would be an area inside the bench uh, on the green, basically. Easily change to a smaller area that feels more comfortable. But um, well, I, I think I think my concern, and I think maybe Moses is kind of piggybacking on that, or somewhere around it, is the larger the area that you designate there, the more uh, potential liability for you. You know, it, it, it becomes harder to police if you get a bigger area. And the more staff. It's not like we're going to have. Oscar there, or somebody's like watching to see if someone's coming and going with a beverage. You know, but we won't be on the ass after it. To, yeah, specifically to watch the area, mm -hmm. and everybody who served anything would, would it would be made known that this is where they have to keep alcohol. How many people are you having uh, oversee this? Um, there would be two, one person serving, and then one to two people serving, and then at least two other people watching. That doesn't seem like what that. are you going to serve? Uh, everything, but just for pickles, there you serve everything in a pink solo cup. So if you don't have your drink that weird or uh, definite container, then you didn't, you didn't get it here. Um, I have not on that. That's probably a pretty good idea. I mean, if you had some certain orderly well, identifiable um, mm -hmm. cup, let's say, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, then it's easier because if someone sneaks in and they're drinking it, well, I'm, I'm sure there are some people right now that sneak in and drink. No, right. but uh, uh, check those water bottles. <laughs> yeah. it's probably not. I, no, I guess Jesse, the question would be like that. That is a huge area. Do you feel like four people is enough to actually keep eyes on it? You know, or or is it for your own liability's sake? Is it safer to, to sort of make it a make it a little more manageable? Because it does feel a little like that's a. I don't think you four people even if two are serving. Like let's say you're you're going full steam and two are serving. Two people with eyes on that whole area, you're going to get people doing things you're not comfortable with, and then it's your neck on the line, not the town. So it's you know I think look at it from the perspective of realistically how you feel and what you feel is manageable, as well as obviously what we're going to say. But you know I guess that you're hearing some some sort of like ooh that sounds. Little unmanageable, and if that is to you saying the same thing, like, well, oh, maybe it is. Yeah. I, I personally feel pretty comfortable with managing that amount of area. Um, uh, we have, I also got from John, there's a couple of volunteers with the our, our council that have volunteered to um, be on gate duty basically, um, and then with our staff as well. I, I do, I'm, I'm flexible, I hadn't thought about like a beer tent sort of a situation. Which is it's harder to do right now because of the you know yeah. the spacing yeah. and giving yeah. you know if it was not those times then you could have like a little pen where you keep everybody you know kind of like all the other places yeah. but I just I mean it's kind of basically the way I see it is you know the town is giving you you know the permit to do this and then it's your responsibility so exactly. it's not you know the town is going to say you know if all of a sudden something happens there then we're just going to say okay we're going to pull the permit. That's just kind of well, I was like, next question happens, is how, how how would that work if something, you know, God forbid something went wrong? Um, well, if you, you if still have the flexibility. We gave permission, we're responsible. Well, we uh, would, um, what we would do is require that, you know, it seems like Jesse would provide us his proof of insurance. We could ask him to provide us proof of insurance. The other thing is, if something goes wrong, you're going to let your control board. If you have a problem the first time, we pull his permit and call DLC and say, Mm -hmm. Look, you know what, there's a problem with the venue, this is what happened, and we're mm -hmm. going to revoke his permit. You have a right to do that because you're the local yeah. control board, the local liquor control board. What? And 
I would think we'd get a, a copy of the insurance anyway, right? Wouldn't that be part of the process? No, actually, yeah, they don't really do that. No, but yeah. I have that here for you. Yeah, yeah, could. yeah so, okay. yeah, yeah, I know. The other thing, too, is you could try, if we heard you could try a smaller, I, I assume it used to be different that you had to have a specific, a smaller area, so which was in my mind, was you had to before have a smaller area um, that you couldn't let them go out of. But now it's interesting because I, you know, hope that you bring up a good point about meeting more people. So. Right. Or, I mean, yeah, if it's in the sort of the Lower down area, if that was the. Yep, that was the Yeah, I heard about the flower. I don't remember where it says yeah. down, sure. Can I marry the select board have read the uh, ordinance on alcohol on the town property? I read it. You have it. I got it, you can get it. So it does say there's an ordinance for the town. There's an ordinance that obviously you don't have the whole container a lot, hence you can see everybody walk around the town with solo cup and over here. So you do have that. You also have a, a uh, ports for the state, for the, not state parks, town parks, which also says, you know, mm -hmm. no smoking, no alcohol, no open flame. And, uh, but you are a select board, you do have the right to authorize them to. It doesn't say in the, this ordinance that we have any way of granting permission to anybody. It's not in the ordinance. I was thinking that you still would have that right. You guys are the select board. I don't see why. So we can change any ordinance we want any time? Select board can. Select board can. I'm OK, here. then I say that we got to open drink in the town of Bethlehem again. We'll go right back to Dodge City. There you go. Well, we'd have to put it. we have to follow the process and do the, you know, to change. To what are we going to do if somebody else comes in and wants to do this? We're going to say yes or no. We set a president, we're going to have to do it. If Bill Campbell wants to come up and do it, we've got to say yes to him because we've said yes to one person. What about uh, Cockadoodle? They, they might want to try and do this to make a little extra money. You have just, a good point. Once you set a, you're right, once you set a president, I don't know how you could say you can't that's get out of it. someone else. So. It, I can certainly. You're right, because everything's a precedent, right? Once you do it once. So. I guess you have to just take that aside, take that. I have another question. The, the application talks about 50 people. Yeah. The governor, we, we can have 150 people there. We're, so if that, what is, I mean, probably just the. Uh, yeah, he just. That was a mess. Yeah, and, and actually, John Dovey had said that he. Know, usually the smaller venues were about 50. They didn't usually see a ton of people, so was what John had said. So it's just an approximate number of persons. He's last, last week there were 20 people there. I went to the country. Oh, yeah? There were 20. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a bigger one on the fourth, but still didn't reach the 150. So mm -hmm. the, I think John had said the average was about 80. 80. 70 or 80. John said the average about 50 people usually attend at concerts. Um, and just also just just keep moving on with the directives here. We can go back and talk about any of them afterwards. Uh, also, uh, by this, it does say that um, you must have separate toilets or lavatories available for men and women. So, are you thinking about bringing in a portalette or talking to the white church or do you, do you have? Yeah, that well, that's, yeah, that's a question for you all also because I know there's usually a porta potty there for the whole yeah. summer. Uh, I've seen this in other. Venues around here this summer. There's one for the body by the state house in Montpelier. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I'm curious about what um, we actually didn't pull them all. We, we, we didn't put one. At Evine, we didn't pull here because the COVID regulations at the time were going to be that we had to clean them twice a, twice a day. At one point, it was twice a day, and uh, we just didn't. We just couldn't do it. I mean, none of the staff to do that. So we. We didn't put one. I called John Duddy and said, like, look, I'm sorry, but I, for not one of the people, there's not going to be one of the band shell. And um, he said, all right, you know, no problem. The concert isn't that long, so a couple hours. But I know, um, but I, and I don't know what the white church has. I don't know if they have two bathrooms. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so you have to. Why should you have to? You have to ask them if they would be willing to do it, because, yeah, we don't. Um, and if you put one out there, then you'd be responsible for cleaning it. And I don't know how much they charge to put it up, take it out, and put it 
They should be cleaned. Each person going in and out should be cleaned. Every person. Have you talked about the regulations? About the porta potties. Yeah. It's not be, what the regulations say now, but I don't know. But it's once to me, day. I wouldn't want to use one unless somebody cleaned it down. I know that's why we didn't pull one out because we just didn't right. have. We don't have, we don't have someone to go clean it. So we don't have the manpower to right. do it. So we, that's why we didn't. Have, have you talked to the white church? Because yeah. I think that would might be the one. Like since there isn't one there now. We can't depend on them saying yes to everything. Well, again, Mo, I'm just getting ahead of myself here, but if we did approve this, it would be on Babes Bar to have all these provisions put together. If they don't have one of them, then they're, then they're operating outside their permit, um, which then either they choose not to operate it or they operate it and you know deal with the consequences. So just, I just wanted to make sure everybody was just kind of I was going through the local directives, anyways, and granted there's a ton of state and federal. The other one was, uh, we touched base a little bit on it, was having su sufficient a number of employees um, for control purposes, which is, you know, their duty is only really to kind of walk around and make sure that people aren't leaving the area or coming in the area with alcohol. Um, and I, I guess that was kind of my biggest point, um, to like, you know, based on the area. So if you're now saying, you know, the, the band shell green, I call it, anything on that's green up there, the band shell would be that. I mean, what do we think the proper number of people walking around? I mean, I would think two two or three people if they were walking around all the time looking to see what's going on, that's probably, you know, but I don't know. Not, not, uh, not knowing the, the way the law is written, and you might know the answer to this, um, since you're sort of talking about the whole area, are there regulations about underage people being in the barriered area? So you're not having to card people coming in. It's they can be in there whether or not they're legally allowed to drink. They can be within the barrier. Okay. That was, okay, yeah, that was my wonder was like, are you making all the, all the kids stand outside in the parking lot? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Is there just out of curiosity, it was like daycare, there has to be like one adult for X amount of people. When do you do that with the control when you serve it? Do they recommend that you have one person for X amount of people? Or uh, that's really your, your thing? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I have to get back to you on that. I would say, in general, when we're doing an event, anything over 50 people, we usually have two people serving. Yeah. Um, Well, they can be in there. They just they don't have to drink. If you get a drink to go to a band, you might as well not. <laughs> You've got a pretty poor lifestyle. And, and maybe I don't know. I mean, maybe it becomes after the first day, the first day you understand how many people you serve. Let's say the first one you only serve ten people, yeah. and maybe the next one, and you can kind of maybe set things up a little different. Yeah. You know, instead of using the whole green, maybe you're only using a half of it or a quarter of it, knowing that. Okay, we're gonna drink again, sit in this area. I think it's gonna to depend too on the music who you get. I mean, Larry Rosari may draw in 30 people, but John Lacker might draw in 75. You know what I mean? Because it's different, you know, but I so it's certainly something new. I might we'll have to touch base and see how it goes. Well, I, you know, 
but anytime we're doing, you know, any type of, you know, alcohol on public, you know, in public land, it becomes more of a potential for issues. You know, there's always people that, you know, when you're trying to take advantage of that, but I'm sure if you go up to the green now, regardless, there's probably the people that are drinking at the concert <laughs> anyways. I mean, right? I mean, that's probably what happen. I mean, that's what I've got uh, people say. It's just in this case, you know, really, He's coming for permission, you know, they're just bringing it. Right, alcohol. looking at it, like, regardless of if they buy the alcohol from you or not, if you're taking responsibility for the green, you're in charge of everybody, you know, with your permit, so you just gotta really be careful now. So even the ones that are sneaking alcohol in, you become liable for that now. But, uh, did, did, uh, or, or a potential of somebody coming in and just buying a beverage and walking away, you know? Or, yeah, you, oh, yeah, know, yeah. you know, thinking that, Abe's is open, you know, kind of thing. So there's that, that may happen too. And, and you may, you know, it doesn't say here, but I would think that you probably want some sort of sign that says, you know, alcohol to be drank on Banshell property or, or, you know, not allowed to, you know, it couldn't be on a sidewalk, let's say. I mean, you know, you can't be in most certain areas. Yeah, but then you'd have to say within orange tape or pink tape or green tape, yeah. whatever you're using, you're going to, yeah, you have to put that. That's or, or all beverage or, or must be in the <coughs> orange cup or whatever it is, or, you know, so that. I'm just concerned about the, the precedent side of it. I mean, I like the fact that having local business have the opportunity to think out of the box and, and do, do something like this, but I wonder how, how do we justify that to the, somebody coming up to me and saying, you've got an ordinance that says no consumption of alcohol you know, not even on town property, just in the town in general is an open, is a, uh, an alcohol, I forget what it's called, it's the very first ordinance on the list. Open container um, laws. Huh? So open container laws? Yeah. That and so how do you, how do we do that yeah. on, on town property? That would be the thing that would come up, uh, those words, on town property, on town property. Great. Well, I wondered too about just, the the whole spacing of the band shell if it, like let's just for for fun let's just say like you took half of it right so the left hand side facing and then left the other half like it might sort of like what mo was saying like some some people might not want to go to a concert and drink and might be driven away by it and you know the i can i can see especially like families with kids being turned away by the idea of having to enter into a barrier barriered off area whereas like if you're just half of it but not all of it if there might even be a little bit of a different feel that it's not like a free-for-all. Like, I think where Paul's going is like, we're setting a precedent, and if our precedent that we're setting is, the whole thing's open, does that feel different than if we say, yeah, no, here's I'm, this I'm designated thinking of area. like Cockadoodle or Tozier's or, um, you know, anybody else that distributes the same type of beverages um, wanted to come in and do the same thing. I mean, uh, right. You, like you say, once you go down the rabbit hole, you're not going to come back out again. It's Don City all over again. Yeah. We used to do something in a different town. We had band concerts on Wednesdays. And what we would do is people would sign up to for a Wednesday for a fundraiser or a sponsor or whatever. Um, and it was ice cream social or so. People would do it like a year in advance. So it was like the Catholic Church always had like the first Wednesday for their their big thing. And then and we did do a tasting one time with the FD on their permission. They had an open container law on the green, but they did. Um, someone was coming in doing uh, wine or some sort of spirit, maybe, and they did a small like tasting area, four ounce sample, that sort of thing, and they, and they did that there. But they signed up for it. So if you had something where you had a repeat, where you wanted people to do something, I mean, you could have people sign up in advance. Maybe John would like that, where you had maybe, okay, we're going to do food, and you're going to do hot dogs and beer one night, and somebody else is going to do something else on a Wednesday, so maybe maybe it ends up working that it's more of a people sign up and, and do a so different businesses have different opportunities mm -hmm. on a Wednesday throughout the summer. I don't know. I mean, there's just some Jesse, saying. do you have to serve food also? I mean, is that part of the license like you have to do down over here? It's part of our, yeah, just generally it's part of the license. And, uh, I talked with Stacey Martin already, who's available with the side of the Mm -hmm. So this way would sort of accompany us. So there's we have to 
you have to have the option of gotcha. So that's the purpose of the dog, right? Yeah. I mean, and I could see what Therese was saying, like, let's say we want to continue this into next year, but Babes is able to be open, maybe then next year it's putting it in, into more of a rotation and opening it up beyond that. So in other words, this fall from the early October first, they can set up a drinking up there too. They would have to have, they're not doing one this year, so, but if they no were, person. they would have to, they would have to have somebody cater it because mm -hmm. you would need them to have their liquor license along with, you know, all the appropriate training and stuff. So it would be, they would have to come and, and you would either approve it or deny it. It'd probably have to be a already established, you know, cocktails or bait or something like that that already has it. I mean, I wouldn't think that someone would just, for one event, would, you know, decide to, to do that with all the regulations. Well, and they'd have to get a catering license. I mean, right, you have a separate yeah. catering well, license for alcohol, right? Whereas, like, Babe serves alcohol but doesn't necessarily have, or sorry, your Babe's cocktail has, serves alcohol but doesn't have a catering license. So I think that's the other piece yeah. of this, yeah, is oh, they'd, yeah. they'd have to. I mean, he has the training, he has all that right. stuff. So. How are, yeah. to, how are you supposed to drink with a mask on? That's up to you. <laughs> Straws through the side. You can allow COVID to spread around all, whoever's there, right? Well, the 20 people that were there at the concert last week, they didn't have masks on. Because so. they were probably all social, were they all six feet apart or something? Yeah. Like this yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, we mandate what we can. I mean, yeah. And that's pretty much, that's why the biggest reasons we're not looking at the bar right now is to the opportunity for this fair spread. Yeah, people we'll need to do, you know, I mean, obviously we... My concern is, uh, I want to be one of these outside things that I've been involved with is, I've worked with fair for 15 years, and when they do that outdoor, kind of what you're going to do, I mean, they have a tent, they have a barrier that you can't get through, and there's a six foot wide opening that's in and out. Mm -hmm can't roam around. So that's was in my vision of what you might have to do to do that there. So I'm not hearing that we're going to do that. Well, we can certainly do that, yeah. I mean, it gets probably cost prohibitive, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But I, I, why I'm, I'm just saying this is what I've seen yeah. right then. And I knew the guy that was running the joint. He said that's what the DLC told him he had to do. Mm. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't just and you're that. you're talking that like the mesh, the orange mesh barrier. Well, they, they bought the plates. Okay. Yeah, but that, that sort of mm -hmm. three it's foot tall. High. Oh, okay. And I mean, you've got to be a girl to get through it. That's how they cleaned up the fair from the drunken brawl that it was. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, is that more? And I don't know enough about. It, is that more on the DLC season things, or is that more on the vendor that's taking responsibility for? It? You know, making sure people don't leave that area. Yeah. Last thing, Scott, he runs the barn in up there, east of it. Uh, and then the guy that I'm really going to work for him, uh, it doesn't matter. He said that the liquor control said that we have to open here, we have to close here. There's, you come in here and you go out here. Nobody gets to go anywhere else. I would think it would be because it says defined area for serving and consumption alcohol with designated barriers. Maybe they define designated barrier. I don't know search, I didn't see it defined, but I've seen it, I've seen it done with it was just like you want know, to go to a bank and it's those pole things. I um, I see where the strip goes between, I've seen it just those. I've seen it a little rinky dink plastic white chain on the sidewalk where it clicked from this to the saw. You know, maybe it was different because it was a Tumbridge Fair where you got a lot of I don't know. I, I just, that's the picture Wait, I'm drawing. It was a picture I was thinking of too. So I, I, I you know, I, I, I was thinking of a barrier too, but I've seen it where it's on the sidewalk and it's just this little plastic chain that, you know. Can we, stuff. is it possible that we can get a little more? Uh, like a diagram of some kind and get a little better idea of the confinement area that we're talking about because um, it's kind of hard to picture it and if we ha if, if it's going to be similar to the Tumbridge Fair kind of thing and then if one way in one way out so kind of like we had set up down at the depot there that one time 
Yeah, I think that would be a better picture for us to take a look at. I don't know if we got enough time to be able to see something more specific that, that shows the exact area and how the traffic's going to come in and out. You have a diagram, Jesse, was it just of the area or yeah. was it just a little drawing? Yeah, it was a picture of the Google app with the, the satellite picture of the area just saying this is your boundary. So this is what I was considering just the whole week. Yeah, I, I would have to go over there and look. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you got that area photographed with you? Yeah. No, this was just, yeah. I don't know, it might, it might delay a little week, but I'm just wondering if we, if we're, if we're looking to go in that direction, if we could structure it somehow, so... You could also give him a specific amount of square footage or right. an X by X section, and then he could figure out right. where to put that, too, so that... Well, it sounds like right it's now, anyway... Yeah, I mean, it sounds like we have, like, two, two separate questions to figure out as the board. Well, the first one will be, you know, regardless of what... Well, you the site you might be running on... on uh, Somebody else's property. Sure. This is not a. No, but I'm just saying, with the way that sets there, there's some copy on right there. So before we get too far yeah. with, yeah. with Bayes, what we may want to do as a board is first is decide, you know, re regardless of what the area looks like or all the parameters of the permit, do we want to forward on you know, granting the permits on town property to use alcohol in the open before we get there? Because you know, we get too far in the weeds and then we decide that we just don't want to do that and it's just waste a lot of people's time. So, so the question would be, are we willing to... I think the first question is, are we willing as a select board to open up the open container law in the town on town property to allow special events? Because, again, like most said, if you open up to one, you're going to have to open up to, you know, both. You're going to have to open up to everybody. So are we prepared? To allow that for all of our other businesses and customers in town. They're all the town, town then. I mean, it's all the town wedding in here, and they want booze in here. And then if we and then if we say we're good with that, then the second thing would be to, you know, go to Babes and say, this is what we really like to see to do that. You know, it might be find an area or put up a certain fence or whatever, limit it to so many people or you know, however that is. And yeah, I'd hate to get it. Get them into doing too much work, and then us to turn around and say we're just not comfortable with opening up the public. We could we so could restrict it to the band show, though. Because we, we don't have to blanket change the ordinance that says now nah, we no longer have an open container. We could just limit this to the band show area. Well, the other question, right around David the, was about to say, what about if they have a wedding in here and they want to have drinks? At well, they can hire and Jesse to come in. Right, he, oh, can bring had, a, he can bring his catering license in yeah, here. Yeah, we had, we had, um, we have a party here. here. You had a here? Yeah. yeah. Um, for the, um, yeah, the benefit the, of the, the good concert that the skate had. Board uh, part, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah with the Vermont Symphony concert and, and yeah. When was that? A couple that years ago. That was May, May, 2018, right? 2018. May, 2016. Wow. I don't believe the sweat but I don't remember approving it. Well, we we did. No, to me, I wasn't. I see the other side. I was looking three. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember us going through. Well, I guess I served here in this building in the last two years. You have? Without permission? No. No. From the sweat board? Uh, well, then I guess that's how I put the kind of though, so it was. If somebody had to sign it, then it wasn't the sweat board. I think it used to be that the town clerk would sign these, and maybe they didn't come in front of the board because when I was here, or came, one of them came in, and someone said, Oh, that doesn't need to go to the board, and the clerk signs it. I'm like, Man, man, man. I'm like, No, it has to go to the board, and then the clerk signs it. So I have a feeling here there may have been. Cases where it was being signed, but not it had to come here first. It was an impression I had because I had to answer a question about that when I first came, and I was like, oh. but maybe the clerk signs it, but it's after. Well, I guess this ordinance is no good. I think we rip it up and throw it out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I had wondered, but I had never seen proof that that happened. So I just asked in the beginning because I said, no, no that's the ordinance. Because if you look at it, it's not even the 
says right here that the town clerk signature, but it does say must each event must have approval from the town city before submitting. So maybe there was some confusion passed. I don't know. I'm not. I'm just saying it may have gone down. That way. Okay, so, um, you guys have posters in it. In the town office, or? Oh, I'm sure. I, I have no doubt. I'm not saying anything. Almost that one back up down where I'm drinking again. I, I have no idea how it played out. I'm just saying there may have been some misinformation. I'm not sure. I just let one member. I gave myself permission. There you go. Anyway, so I guess you're right. You're going to have to start with that. Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm sensible. I'm big enough for three. I have that word. I mean, I think at this point, I don't know if we would be restricted to, if we're going to make a motion, I don't know if we'd be restricted to one or two white entities in the town, or if it would be, you know. Yeah, I guess that was going to be one of my questions. Is, event, are we able to, so trying to follow what Dave was saying, are we able to designate, if we say yes to this, and it opens up this, concept that any anybody could get permission can we restrict it to a business with a catering license versus just an individual wanting to have a wedding right so then if they wanted that they would have to have a business that caters if the business carries insurance and is you know basically taking on that liability as opposed to an individual saying i want to serve alcohol they don't necessarily have the same you level have of insurance and because whoever does it to, in order to come with a request to cater they've already they would have to be a legitimate, because they have to provide a license number. And right, she's talking about, okay, my daughter's getting wedding, getting wedding. Getting married, yeah. Whatever, and I want to have it here, and I'm having so 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 here. No, the select board could say, uh, no, they could say the only way you could have alcohol. Okay, that's what she's asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, so if we, can we designate it as only a business that holds a catering license and insurance sure. could serve alcohol because like at my wedding we just we had friends serve alcohol we didn't right. we didn't have a caterer serve it we did it ourselves right. so and some people do that at home right. on their own we don't, we don't yeah. some people do that at home on their own property you're right they well, and, and your, so just to think about the liability on the town's behalf if we're going to open this door to people potentially serving alcohol on town property we would cover our butts a bit more if we're designating that a licensed caterer with insurance oh, is doing it, as opposed to yeah, any You'd have to establish a structure for the whole process, you know. Right? You if we're going to start limiting square footage and... You'd have and to revisit the ordinance. You'd have to revisit the ordinance and... And, and you also have a rental agreement for town hall, so you could revisit it there, too. But currently it says no alcohol, so anybody would have to come in front of you to get Little did you know you what you were doing tonight. <laughs> so do you read it as that we need to make an amendment to the current policy to be able to offer this, or are we, or are you saying that we can go ahead and grant individual uh, licenses for special events on a first come first serve? I think that you each. have the authority to case by to, case to make. Um, I think that you have the authority, yes, to to, to do what they are. I'm saying right now because the ordinance says that you can't have alcohol if you make or tobacco. An or you can't make an amendment tonight to the ordinance because to make an amendment to the ordinance takes time. You have to warn it. You have to do this. You have to do that. However, you can. I, but I'm saying inside the policy, do we have the right, because we're not making an amendment, to purchase or to approve, make, approve the to a lot of patient? Well, I would say yes. I don't see why you wouldn't have your select where you have the right to decide on, you know, what happens on town property. Yes, you have an ordinance. However, you are also the same body that, that can change those. So I guess I'd have to do some more research. I just never thought it was a stumbling block, frankly, because I've seen it done before. So I just didn't think it was an issue because every town has an open container well, line. We all I see what's going on in the world today is just pull the stumbling blocks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you look at every town probably has an open container law. So every that's why you have a request to cater. It comes in front of you. If it didn't have a open container law, it'd be a free-for-all. Everybody could do what they wanted. So they automatically are giving you a process to go outside of your, you know, your open container law by allowing you, know, you to approve individually a request to cater. So
So to me, that's, that's not mentioned in the ordinance right now. I'm sure it isn't. What year was that thing signed? Ninety-seven. 97. So I'm just saying, it's yeah. part of the state laws. We want to change the ordinance. We've got to go through the procedure of doing it, and then there's a 30-day waiting period after we change it right. in case there's uh, people that disagree with it. Absolutely. So, I understand the process and how to amend the ordinance. I'm just saying I think that obviously state law supersedes, and I think that that's why we even have this process. That we wouldn't even be having a grant requests to cater if we didn't have, you know, open container laws. So I wonder if the state kind of made this pathway. That's, that's, that's my question. But I'm the state's way of giving us permission that's to what I, designate like I an area. Have taken it, yeah. and so, but, but also, that's that, also my but this opinion. this doesn't then, doesn't take into account that it's town property. I mean, right. This is a general application. Well, right, that could be for it could be on someone's right. private land. It could be anything. Yeah. With somebody came um, um, away. So yeah, I think so. There's a new form that's revised on three twenty two. This is uh, nineteen. This form. So is there any? Is there any leeway in the current policy? I don't have in front of me the current Do policy that that does grant Do the select board the opportunity no. to. Doesn't sound like it's a no, it's same pretty. Thing. It's pretty cut and dry. Yeah, no, it's a sort of assumption of an alcohol beverage by any person within our place. All spines, beverage spines, public place. Should we confer it with the LTC? The ordinance, the ordinance was enacted for the purpose of prohibiting the consumption of alcoholic beverages or the possession of open containers containing alcoholic beverages in public places in the town of Bethlehem. This ordinance may be reviewed in Bethlehem. Yeah, so yeah, I don't see any way to get it in here. But I can certainly find out. And, um, Start somewhere, and yeah. It is that's my only concern. You know, if we do go that direction, we'll have to set up a structure that somebody coming in, if we, you know, and if we limit it to the band shell, we're gonna have to say, All right, you have so many square feet, mm -hmm. you have to have so many people watching, blah blah blah. Um, now, I can see restricting it, I, I can't see throwing out the ordinance, that doesn't make sense, but. Setting up some kind of a structure where we could have a, a on a case by case basis. Well, that would require um, another piece, another document, because this document yes. is put up by the Department of Liquor and Moderating Division of Liquor Control. So that's this is not our document. No, no, it would be a different, it would be a town document that says you'd have to do this and that and the other thing and provide all the documentation and all that. Show us that you've been to the DL, uh, Department of Liquor Control. I mean, it might be, you know, because it does refer back to state statute, too, so. Yeah. That was on penalties, I believe. Uh, the way I read it. I mean, it probably wouldn't hurt to circle around with the, the lead yeah, to see I what. I can also call it for control. Based on what our, our ordinance is and do we, what, what are our options? Or I think it's sad that what they've done here in the state is Good at doing this. It's very ambiguous. I mean, uh, have a defined area for serving consum and consumption of alcohol and the designated areas. Defined area. Count that one. Areas. Uh, coal on every corner of the town. And that would fill that definition. Are you kidding me? Right, I've been looking at it. It must be, a, should be clearer for you yeah. to know what you need yeah. to do. A lot of towns require so many square feet per yeah. person. Yeah. I think if you could do that too, Jesse, if we're going to circle around to the VLCT and just do a check there, if you could do a little diagram 
um, that show, <coughs> excuse me, shows the potential area that you're looking at and keep everything that we've talked about tonight about trying to keep it restricted. Um, you know, if you assume that you have 100, let's say we have 100 people there, how would you set up to allow 100 people to have enough well, social you distancing? Had, you had an X number of square feet, which right. could handle X people correctly distanced. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have you do have it cordoned off with an exit entrance exit, and okay, the guy like yeah, we got 39 people in here. We don't have one more. Somebody leaves, somebody else will come in. I mean, that happens in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Well, to have 30 people in there, six feet apart, that's pretty good square footage. Well, and I don't, I don't know about numbers. Well, well we, could, we could go like I think it's I can't remember what the the governor has metrics right now for. Yeah, by square footage, so it's not quite the. Right. Yeah. And that's where Burlington's getting close to the over. Yeah. 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 First and second floors because it's just not all camp. So, you know, just one by yeah. 12. There's a train behind you and beside you. Yeah, the leaks down there. How much? I guess you see we're struggling with it. <laughs> a couple and I'm of on the things. liquor control <laughs> website and they're not giving more information than we are. It's going to end up holding up. It's going to end up holding up for a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, you know, they don't well, explain stuff there. Yeah, so they don't give you like much more information. What would we like to our options are to move forward with something uh, or you know, decline it all together or to table it until the next meeting where we would have some opportunities to touch base with the league to see what you know what or anything can be done without making amendments to the court, uh, yeah. to the ordinance now and also give like Jesse and Owen right opportunity to better describe you know how that plan would look like. Yeah. And, and I think we're looking at the it. long haul. I mean, it's not just you this year wanting to do these particular events, but it's setting up something that's going to last. Well, if somebody wanted to do something like what was the end of Florida Fest or beyond you know, us, you know, if we ever had another street fair again, you know, there's, there's all those different things mm -hmm. that could hold or here. Or if we wait until the next meeting, that's only going to leave in three venues. Right, next one. Leaves in twenty-seven. Five. Not even. Huh? We leave in five. Yeah. No, because yeah. we don't meet till twenty-seven. So there's twenty-nine. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? So he's, he's got. He's got so many days to get that in before. But you yeah, they said they'd wait. You're gonna fast track the whole thing, right? They said they'd wait. They said, yeah. 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 I don't think that's that's a concern. Used to it. No, we used to do it. It's not a big deal. Well, it wouldn't be ideal if it was to, but right. defining the area a little better and how you're going to control it with a big meeting or a lot more. Yeah. And I think if, yeah, if we were going to go with the, the latter option that Chris was saying of wait until two weeks, I'd want to give Jesse some pretty clear, like, what we want. So that and he's, even really if it's not, it. yeah. Well, right, so it's like the fine area or definitely able to use the bathrooms at the white church, like things like that, so then at least it's not, you're not stalled out two weeks from now with different issues. You shouldn't have to rely on the white church for bathrooms because that's, they're not a public building, they're a church. That's a, and they could charge you 50 bucks for the use of the bathrooms or whatever, 100 bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, I think to Lindley's point is right now, I think what the board needs to decide is do we want to move forward with the potential of allowing alcohol on town property and you know again any of the other pieces all we're really it's, it's just about you know are we going to allow it or not and then whoever the vendor is that we give permission to they have to sort out all the details i mean they have to sort out where people are going to go to the bathroom who's cooking food or that's all part of their permit that's not for us to sit here and and you know, micromanage. Uh, but what we have to decide right now is, you know, do we want to approve it as is, which doesn't sound like you want to. Um, you know, do we want to, like Mo said, do we want to decline it all together, um, or do we want to uh, move forward with finding out some information from the league and then making a better decision at the next meeting? Um, 
<coughs> you know, the league might say, you know, as per whatever, you have the right as a board to do it on an individual basis, like a but they may say that. Um, so, I mean, I, but again, we don't want to waste time if we're, you know, the board decides that we don't want to move forward with this, regardless of what the league says, then we know that it's not something uh, But if we say, as long as the league, you know, or, you know, at this point, as long as a, a lawyer or a league says that we can move forward with this, the way it's drawn up then, then, then we can, you know, talk to Jesse and, and Owen and say, this is what we'd like to see, you know, for the next time, like Linux and right? So I, I guess the first like, question is... I'd like to have more information before... I mean, if we say yay or nay, we're kind of... we're locked. And I'm feeling like I'd like to get the VLCT um, opinion mm -hmm. and, and more defined boundaries and, and plans. So if the, if the league... If the, so what I'm trying to get at it is... So if the, if, Three stocks of league, and the league says, per whatever, per the state statute or whatever, you have the authority to grant this mm -hmm. on a case by case basis. Are you willing to move forward with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Paul's going to. What, what's your thoughts on, on that, Dave? Under what league, conditions? <laughs> well, it, it, there's more to that. I mean, if the league, the league would give me the uh, move forward with seeing the plan, I'm still going to stick with the better definition of the area and how you're going to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the bathrooms, you know, that, that's important because it's on here, but that, that's up to that, them. Yeah, that's up to them. As long as you, you do what they yeah. say that did, I, I don't care. I wouldn't care how you do it. I, I do think I would be, it would, not, it would be important to me to know where is this area? So if the league, if the league says that we can approve the vendor application as as current, then great. We're gonna we're trying to get as we get a consensus of this. Then before he leaves tonight, we're going to go through this is what we like to see the next time because if. You know, it doesn't make sense for him to do all that homework. We're just going to shoot it down. I have a really different idea. So, those of you that know the boundary line better than me, tell me where I'm wrong on this. But what if you approached the White Church about using their land as the beer garden, right? So, there's that green space up along the side of the building, up to the front, and even sort of back around in the back side of the parking lot. And that's barriered off. You're not on town property. You're on their private property getting their permission, but you're still able to see the venue. It might alleviate this issue entirely. And then maybe it's that you work something out with the white church. Much up to the white church's windows. Right. I mean, it, the idea being that it's not putting us in the bind of are we setting a precedent that we can't go back easily on? And then, you know, maybe you can work something out with them of a fee for use of the, the bathrooms and the land and you know everything everything's on you in terms of that. I don't know. It's just an idea as mm -hmm. maybe worth exploring. The property, the whole thing, the concerts and everything. Nobody yeah. else has a band show. Pardon? So nobody else has a band show for the acoustics. <laughs> well they can build one. So that I mean I guess that, that gives them an option if look this doesn't work, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't see you leaving them on for two or three weeks and then saying no. Or yes, either way. Well, but even, like, I, I think the thing that a lot of us are grappling with is that it does so, sort of put us in this weird spot where we want to help them out, but we're, we're sort of exactly. setting a precedent, right? And if we right. just don't have to deal with the precedent issue at all because it's not on town property, you're, they're taking the responsibilities, you know, like Dave was saying, all, the, all of the things that the state wants are still on them, but it's not on, it's not on public property, in a sense. As long as there's no way alcohol left over. I don't know. It's just a, it's a thought. But I, uh, churches are kind of funny about alcohol. Right. Well, <laughs> it's outside the building. Um, yeah. Well, well, the white church gave us permission to do an April event with alcohol, but we had the co-parents, we had, we had already set up for our April thing with alcohol. 
us be yeah, right. yeah, you've, you've and catered we did, out of there. And we did the Italian dinner right. for Bethel University with alcohol in the white chip. So we've done. Yeah, they, so they, they will have, they'll they, allow somebody uh, with a catering uh, license to come in there. Yeah, I've been to events there. There's been on call. Well, let's, yeah, let's find out, well, let's just keep on with the town-owned responsibilities. Right. And then, you know, I mean, even if we say yes, I mean, it still gives, maybe, you know, maybe just go to the white church and that might be the easiest thing anyways. Right, and then but, it's you know, if we all, you know, if we have a majority that says no right now, then at that point, you know, your only option is to look at the white church, you know. Um, so, but, so Dave, if I'm hearing you right, is, if, if we're, you know, at the league or somebody says that we're allowed to approve this as is, as long as it follows all the parameters to the... crazy thing with the ordinance. I mean, you don't want to start just little yelling doing things with ordinances, and then some old that with the, that ordinance, why can't you let me buy with the trash ordinance chain or, or whatever? The, the league is typically very conservative, so they're going to err on the side, I'm saying the extreme side of caution. They aren't board members. No, but they're the insurance carrier. That's what he's saying. They'll probably, you know, they're going to take a conservative view about whether or not you should do it. What my past dealings with the league is if the league, you know, if there is a wiggle room in there, they're going to err on the side of saying no. Um, just because of the insurance and you know things like that, which then it's just as simple as what does the board want to do? If it is to go to the league and see what the league's um, opinion is on it, and if they say no, then we're at no, right? I mean, I want to support our business. I don't want to back us into a point. Mm -hmm. right? But while we're if we get an approval here to go talk to the league, let's say. While we're doing that, still gives Jesse the option to go, Jesse and Owen the option to go talk to White Church too. So they could have plan A and B, you know. Um, but I just don't want to get too far into the weeds here if they don't really need to. So it sounds like with Dave, you're kind of on the same boat with Paul. Yeah. And Lindley, what are you thinking? I mean, yeah, I, I definitely, I want to support them being able to have some business and some income, but I also think we have to be cautious about the precedent. And I think regardless of whether they end up at the Van Shell or at the White Church, like obviously we need to up, <laughs> update our ordinance. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to have, if it's gonna be on town property, it'd be nice to at least as a board have some defined what we're willing or not willing to give. And so like like Dave was saying, like define parameters, but maybe also how we'd, how we'd be setting this precedent for future. Like if two weeks from now somebody else comes to us with a different thing, are we comfortable saying the same thing that we're saying to Jesse as we are to this other entity? Um, I guess that's where I land with it. It's not a good answer. Pick one of the three. It's kind of a not answer. <laughs> <laughs> I get that I'm doing that. I'm getting the ballot box out. So. Can I abstain? Well, it sounds like regardless of what we do here, we're probably, we're probably still going to have to go back and re-look at right. the current policy and decide as a board if we want to make any amendments to that or not. And at least my my understanding is we can we can say yes to Jesse and no to somebody else if for whatever reason we felt uncomfortable with that other entity, correct? We're, like, we're, we're yeah, also, I, I know, I know, but we can't technically. I'm not saying we would, but just that, you know, if Jesse comes to us and he's got all his ducks in a row, but somebody else, you know, Mo, Mo comes and says, I just want to serve alcohol to my buddies. I don't know. No. You and George. I don't know. So, so right now, anyways, we get a majority of let's look at at least the league yeah. to see if we are allowed to operate that way. Mm -hmm. um, and here's uh, so, so here's our so it looks like we if you had to look at this, yes, that see how it looks like it goes way out here. It looks like we own this, but it looks like they own the majority of the parking lot. However, nine one one viewer is not always really accurate depending on the parcel map because you're right. This makes it look like. The way church owns the majority of the parking lot. And I'm under the impression that Mo is that we own all there. So this 911 viewer, the 911 viewer could, it's not always accurate. Well, Depends on the person. If it's in surveys, I, I think we own 
the grass up to the, oh, to the white church. Yeah. Well, I don't know. When I was, we had a complaint about right. somebody so it's at least parking enough. there yeah. behind the white People church. People could hang out in a line watching the um, concert. They looked into it, and I think Oscar got involved. Well, sure, but the, I mean, we're also trying to support the white church. Farmers are just parked in there, and the town is being taken. Oh, yeah. I know. I yeah. believe me. Yeah. 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 of time. Yeah, I am as best I can. I haven't heard what Mom said. That's what I think too. But maybe what you're saying. I don't know. I have to go look and see if anything was surveyed and look at the person. Well, we can talk to uh, Larry. You know, Larry Noble. He's the honcho at the White Church there, and look at the deed too. But But he put the put the yeah. But the feeling was that the that the White Church owned that parking area because we were having trouble. We were having trouble getting somebody that was living there moved along. And it was looked into. The state police got involved. And Oscar got involved and whatnot. And so then, their determination was that. I don't think it was an official determination. I was going to say I, I wasn't part of that, but yeah. um, I'd have to go look at the deed and see if it was surveyed and all that. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll yeah. look. I mean, we think that we would have some rights to some of the parking as well. We plow the whole thing, so I guess if the church owns part of it, we don't plow all of it. People can figure out how they're going to plow. I mean, <coughs> anyway, so it sounds like that we're willing to table this. We're going to get some more information from the league to see if we can even move forward with granting the application the way the ordinance is currently. Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. Now, in the meantime, is is there any recommendations the board would like to give the applicant in regards to, you know, uh, diagram of the area or breaking down the area uh, or what we'd like to see for barrier or well, now that I've seen this map I would, I would, I would suggest that we take a look at a, a legal map. Or some ask somebody Wait, I look at the parcel find out exactly where that, that is because not only is according to the drawing I have in front of me there's an awful lot of area to work with that doesn't belong to him. I'll I can look and um if you were going to ask them to use their restrooms, you would be on their right to the front of the I don't know if that works or not, but I'm just It defeats a little bit of the purpose of combining the two events. I would think that one, you'd want to have it not in the middle of everything. You'd want it off to the side somewhere, either n- next to the band shell down at that end, or somewhere where it's not right in the middle of the whole. Could you do? Could you do match. a strip? You know, like essentially, you're looking at the band shell and you split it half and half. So half is, you know, which whichever half, but half this way and half that way. You know, so then you get if you get people who really just they they don't want to or they don't want their kids around alcohol, they can they can still get up to the stage, they can still have visibility, but not you know. Well, sure, but I I think you're making an unfair set of arguments over here that people are going to go, people are going to drink, and some people aren't going to drink. People are going to go regardless of whether there's alcohol. Like I don't think it's going to dictate. That's all people got to do in life. They got a pretty poor piss poor. I think Jesse, if you if you made, you're gonna have to make like a like a bear tent kind of thing, you know, where you've got a restricted area in and out. But I would think people are gonna come. You know, it doesn't. I don't think if you have it in the middle, it's just gonna be in the middle of the majority of people trying to look at the band and hear the band. If you have it off to the side, people are gonna go there. I mean, it's yeah. you know, if they want a beer, they're gonna have a beer. Um, so I, I think. You know, the area down by the band shell, you know, next to it, or down in there, maybe. Maybe that's a possible area. 
you don't want to be tying up parking. There's usually a lot of parking down in that area too, behind the white church and adjacent to the Anchill area. So if you, maybe if you were tucked down in that area there, you know, so, something like that. Just that was kind of what I had pictured was kind of like when the past when we had the art bus yeah. be down that corner, like if you're looking at the van shell to the right. To the, yeah. And just like, like the yeah, side like, of the van shell. There's a grassy the area a right bit. there. That was, kind yeah. of the area. Yeah. that was kind of the area I had kind of thought of. Of course, yeah. you know, if you're on the parking lot, I don't know how it would drive into the ground. You'd probably have to be something in a bucket or something. Well, no, you'd be in. But, you know, I, I, I definitely don't feel comfortable with the whole area being open. Yeah, so. I don't. I don't. Because I just think it's one, it's going to be very hard to police. Um, yeah. And two, it could put others in a position of, you know, I didn't come here to see people drink, I came here to hear music, mm -hmm. um, you know, right. type deal. Um, so. so we've tabled us to the next meeting. We're going to get some information from the league to see if we can even grant the application the way our current <coughs> ordinance is. The other thing you could um, do is you could, there's another option, which is. Change this so that where it says the location of the event is the Bethel Band Shell Common, change it to the White Church, which gives Jesse and Owen a chance to deal with the White Church tomorrow and the next day and see if, so take the town out of it entirely and approve it so that they can hold it at the White Church if they get the approval of the White Church. Then, then they, it doesn't stop them. They can start Wednesday if they get permission from the White Church tomorrow, or if it takes them a little bit longer, maybe they don't miss out on those two, um, those two events, if they can get permission from the White Church and we can supply well, them right, right. Right. Huh? Well, church. but they still need, yeah. but you still need they to sign, need to sign up. Well, I mean, so you still have the approval, and I could, we could start my job right tomorrow, you get them a picture of the actual, you know, there's a survey, we can figure out what the town, what the White Church owns via the, what we have on the tax maps. Um, and that at least gives you more options if we do that tonight. And then it gives you more options, yes, and it also gives you a deal but to work going out to be responsible that. if somebody's caught with alcohol on our property? Well, right. I mean, he was going to gonna be responsible regardless. He's going to be responsible regardless. Right. Um, I'm just saying, it gives you the opportunity to kick it from your plate. You can do some research, but it also doesn't hold him up, and it gives him the chance to, they've obviously allowed alcohol in the past, so maybe it gives Owen and Jesse an opportunity not to miss out on Maybe they'll miss one and not both, and then it so gives them an opportunity. We still can do our due diligence and figure out what we're going to do. Um, but, but we're doing that without the approval of the White Church. But I mean, you can say that in motion. Obviously, yeah. you can't do it as we say. You say yeah. you can do it. Right. So, yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, you have to say, you know, with removed permission from that. I'm just saying, it gives, instead of holding him up, obviously, everybody wants more money, and, you know, so I'm just saying there's another option. You want to entertain. And I don't know if we talked about the church, if it's G or if it's, I'm assuming it's G Burnham, but I don't know. Um, it's, it's, um, that I've dealt, when I did the April event that we're going to get to do, um, I, I had to get permission from Larry Noble. Yeah, Larry's, G, Larry's the guy I deal with over there. Yeah, so, um, Larry, I'm just saying it's G, G referred me to Larry Noble. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gene does this, did the scheduling. Yeah. So at this time, what would you like to do? Would you like to wait to the next meeting and see what we come up with, which is a you know 50-50 at best mm -hmm. type thing? Yeah. In the meantime, you can figure out what plan B's are, but you'll probably lose two events. Or do you want to do what Therese said, take a chance with the white church? Um, if the board is you know approves it, then you would be all set to operate. You know, immediately. You know, after that, it's up to you between you and the white church and figuring out. You know, all that. Um, I guess I will approach the white church about it. Um, I mean, I don't know how this meeting is. If you need twenty minutes, I can go look at the space right now and draw you another map. Uh, um, uh, about a different service area. Well, we like still we still want to go through the, the BLCT process. Right, exactly. and, uh, so it's going to be from on the town property stance. It's still going to be another two and a half weeks. Um, right. right. So, 
So if we change this application, like Therese was saying, if we change this to the white church, we can pre-approve it, assuming the white church gives, but you have to make that call, right? You're the applicant, so we can't change it for you. You have to say, yes, I want to change it to the white church, and then you'd have pre-approval, so let's assume they say yes next week or whenever you can shift into that space. But they'd be, they'd be the one that then would designate where, right? We wouldn't have any say over where your barriers would be or yeah. how you can use the space because it's theirs. But this well, is just still us. have to adhere to the DLC. Yes. Well, right, but, know, but we wouldn't dictate schedule. where the barriers would go. <coughs> this is just us no, approve, it. pre-approving it so you could do something before two weeks from now. Right. We wouldn't have any control over other than you know, alcohol could go out to yeah. the public. Right. right. Yeah, they may say, no, you can't have an outside, you got to have an inside wall. I don't believe one person from the church is going to approve this. I think they've got to go through whatever their, their structure is of, uh, of uh, political. Yeah, the House Committee or whatever. whatever yeah, yeah. I can't think of the name right now. Credential Committee, I think. Right. Yeah, I don't, I'm just trying to give you options so that instead of. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting option. Yeah. But again, at that point, that would be between Bates and yeah, the White Church. Yeah. Yeah. But it at least gives you a path. Two potential paths forward. If we're pursuing one, then mm -hmm. you pursue this other. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I have looked at that since so I don't know how big that we're actually talking about. How many people you can actually fit in that. Right. Story, but, um, yeah, I would be curious. You went the whole church? The whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, we would be having a big side. Just to do that. Yeah. Probably yeah. better if you're going to use the bathroom trip. Yeah. I mean, the church there is only, you have the front yard, you have behind the building. And then I guess you'd probably have to find some sort of ownership map to figure out how yeah, much we the can park it on. I'm interested in that because we might not have to park so much there. Yeah, thing. we can look. I mean, right now, we'll <laughs> see that it's showing because it comes way out in the parking yeah. lot. The yeah. majority yeah. on that 911 yeah. yeah. meter, I would have to. Yeah. 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 So we just have to double check that. But, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the I white church, I guess, takes care of your whole restroom thing, too. You know? Yeah. Yep. So what would you like to do? Well, I want to, I will pursue the white church independently of this. Um, I would, yeah, I'm still interested in. Um, would you like us to go, uh, well, I'm assuming the board, uh, you know. We just do a couple events. To motion to change this to the white church and see if we approve that this evening and then you walk out of here with, you know, sign or, permit. Well, or leave it, and if he talks to the white church and they say okay, you can resubmit. Yeah. But then I mean, that could be when it's two weeks. But then he's still yeah, yeah, it'll be two weeks two. before. I would miss, I would miss one. If the white church says okay, well, we'll probably miss this week. But and next uh, week, because we don't, we won't be back in session until the twenty seventh. Well, so. that one, if it's on the white church property, that doesn't have anything to do with this. Right. Thing. Right. Exactly. So for your application. Well, that one will just go through the town. That doesn't have to. It's no. Right. Right. Yeah. It has to be We have to approve. Weeks. So if they don't sign it tonight, right. they don't sign it for two weeks, which means you don't you miss the 15th and the 22nd. But well, why does this like we're have to to sign the white church for? Um, because it's just state because they're the local liquor control board. If you look at here, it says each catered event must have approval from the town before submitting an application to liquor control because these guys are the local liquor control board. They're the ones who sign your liquor license. So they have to approve these. Even if it's on private property, they approve it. It's a funny thing, but it's the way it works. Um, and yes. Yeah, I would say if you want to go, if you're going to pursue the white church, you yeah. want us to do this application yeah. tonight. Yeah. That would be in your best interest. Yes. Uh, that's an okay. Is that what it's called, the white church? I mean, it's have a, Well, okay. is it White Church or is it the United Church of Bethel? I mean, they, they, yeah. I send my bills to the United Church of Bethel. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of oh, both. Okay. It's kind of both of them. I'm not sure what the corporation is. The United Church of Christ. Yeah. <coughs> so I would entertain a motion to, to accept the, the alcohol permit. Uh, for Babes Bar to access the uh, the land, the uh, Church of Christ, the um, White Church, uh, 
um, for the events of the 15th, 22nd, 29th of July, 5th, 12th, 19th, and 26th of August, between the hours of 6 and 9. Pending approval. Pending, appro pending permission from, from the owner themselves. So moved. Okay, moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. No. No. Okay. Okay, so I'm sorry. I missed who was the motion. I moved a second. I don't think we did a second. Oh, you said you moved a second. Well, I, well, oh, I, you I entertained the motion. It. Yeah. I moved it. You moved it. Who seconded it? I'll, I'll second. Okay, I'll second. <coughs> Thank you. Right. So you all set with that? I mean, I guess in the meantime, if it doesn't hurt, you can freeze yeah, sure we'll and give a phone call to the league. I'll email you. The it's probably um, probably something that the board's going to want to take up because there are other pieces of town property that have had functions um, <laughs> that we're finding yeah, out that may or may not have come before the board. You know, so, for some reason, the white shirt says no. Right, and we're going to have to revisit when they yes, have to we're revisit, revisit it. it anyways for us. But as far as the town hall, there's been some activity here. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like something that we may want to. Yeah. And I'll get it. Um, so the board approves it, and then actually Pam has to sign it. But yeah. so if you just call the office and let us know once you speak to Larry, um, call Pam, and she'll either send it on or she won't. Mm -hmm. What's uh, can you tell me Larry's last name? No, no. Bicentennial Lane. Bicentennial Lane. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting conversation. <laughs> hey, we haven't had a can of worms in a while. That's I know. It's a good one. Yeah. Gets us uh, sharpen our tools a little bit. Mm. for the ditching work, you know, the town-wide ditching that was bid. Where's the, where's the ditch? Um, I don't know, there's various there's locations. There's several places like yeah. that, most of them Camp Brook Road that we're ditching. Yeah. Oh, okay. Camp Brook and, and Spring, Spring Hill, Dart Hill, yeah. Camp Brook. Yeah, one of them was done, so we're going to have to do a little bit more, I think, about Camp Brook. So, um, uh, so the Lobiter was paying us construction, um, but she called and said that they pulled their bid because they needed Yeah. <laughs> um, and we also had looked at equipment. I'd asked AJ and Alan to evaluate the bids and, and, you know, machinery size, et cetera, to figure out what would be, what they thought they should go with anyways. And they had felt that they should go with, um, we should move and go with W.P. Rogers. Um, even before she pulled it in. So that is the recommendation of Alan, AJ, and myself is to accept W.P. Rogers. I've got one question mm -hmm. on the project location, number yeah. four. Yeah. It says replace with Christian Hill. Does, are they replacing, not doing Dark Hill? Or? They already, there was a question mark because they already they did that. They did, um, <clears throat> they ended up doing that piece, the town did when they borrowed barns. They did that Dark Hill section. And okay. so I was like, okay, you replace it with Christian Hill. They were kind of undecided. so. There was an issue that um, Chris had mentioned. I think you have two on <clears throat> Christian Hill, right before that. Um, oh, there's like that stop sign there, and when you're coming down, it splits from Christian to Sanders. And Christian Sanders. Okay, yeah. So yeah. we're thinking maybe we would replace it with that piece. But <clears throat> when Alan and AJ saw the bid, they're like, oh, we did that piece. I'm like, okay. And then. No, I, it was just a question because I was just wondering if it was going to roll for every place. Or yeah, no, that's why I would place it. I could roll off some place on Christian Hill if you really want to find a place. Well, it's more on Camp Brook because a lot of the ditching you can do with a breaker, but there's, you know, when you're doing the pavement, there's also some more on Camp Brook you can do with a breaker. So we were getting a base price and we figured we'll probably end up adding a little bit because I hadn't um, done the ditching yet. So we're getting a base price and we figured we'll probably end up What was the total amount that we had saved uh, put aside in the budget for that? Was it 20000 It was twenty. So, when we make the motion, would you like yep, not, not to exceed 20000 or something like that? Mm, yeah. And as I said, the bottom is a 
approximately 1.3 miles. So we're depending on bid yeah. prices more maybe. Yeah, and that's where, you know, yeah. labor, equipment, and materials. Yeah, yeah. And we're providing the trucking with that work. Yeah. So is there a figure somewhere that kind of matches up to that 20,000 to show us based on one point, whatever, one point? Well, the estimate was that 1.7 um, miles. 1.3. So basically we... So you can't just multiply it out and come up with a number, right? No, that's because simple. some of it's going to mean stone line, some that of simple, it isn't, right. and yeah. there may be some stuff we added. We kind of picked some spots to see what the bids were going to be, mm -hmm. and then we knew that's why we said we might add more work. So once okay. we had their price, we'll have a better idea of what we can add. Yeah. Um, but there's some... I'd, I'd actually like to see them do some more on Camp Road, like up by um, Comstock, and uh, Griffin, if you know, then we need to do a little ditching up there, which would be nice to get some ditching up there done and maybe even put in a culvert. But we also need to remove the farms under Camp Brook Guardrail. So that's something else mm -hmm. we've done this week. But anyway, so no, we can't really tie them. We yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so not to exceed would be the way, mm -hmm. way to do it. And there's, you know, probably everywhere the town needs to be ditched somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, but this is, you know, just the first year of it, and, you know, we're going to have a well, I got 150 yards and I got feet. So that, so we're just, you know, hopefully, you know, that we can get uh, put money aside for ditching, which hasn't ever been done in town, I don't think. Before. A lot of it can be done with a crater. Yeah, it's some of it. Done on. I mean, the big thing is time. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a piece, um, trying, I can't remember the road, but at the end of Christian Hill, and then if you want to go over to Arnold Road, what's the yeah. They did, you know, we just did some ditching up there with the backbone. Yeah. That came out really good. Yeah, know. that was done with an excavator, not with a great Oh. Yeah. Oh, was that with the environment? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. was, I don't know who did that. They did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. All the needs now are yeah. in the so, so that was really good, too. So, uh, well, I did talk about some vegetation. Yeah, 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 we yeah. talked about this. We talked about that. Yeah. 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 That came out nice, and I yeah. right yeah. there. I'd like to, I think, well, I've talked about that. I'm just going to get a high It's literally a couple of that came out really nice. So. Yeah, it did. So I would entertain a motion to accept uh, the ditching or annual ditching bid uh, not to exceed $20,000 worth of um, labor equipment and materials to Debbie B. Rogers. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. Aye. Mm -hmm. The ayes have it. <coughs> that was a quick one. I think it's not very rough. Yeah, I feel like it's not much. It's because um, you're in the sunshine. <laughs> yeah, I was, as soon as it popped through the cloud, I was like, oh, when is he here? You know, I've been five, five years on the board, I would have thought I would have figured that out. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Take a couple months off from the space, you forget. <laughs> well, we were sitting over the air for a while. Yeah. Uh, we just need to rotate with the seasons. <laughs> and then we had uh, setting the 2020-21 tax rate. Should have been in your packets. I just got to figure mm -hmm. out which side of this double sided sheet is. So, um, and then Teresa and I were kicking that around. When we had set the budget on town meeting day, the anticipated municipal tax rate was going to be a dollar five. Uh, 1.052 is what we had estimated and and what the rate is going to be or if, you know I entertain a motion to set the municipal tax rate for the 2021 season to 1.0425 so it ended up coming in one penny less than we had anticipated at the town level. Is that a motion? Yeah, also oh, we <laughs> okay, where is 1.04? Right down yeah. the bottom. Municipal tax rate, if you add the oh. general fund and the local agreement together, it's 1.0425. Oh, I see. We don't approve the, the state, you know, they give oh, us okay. the state. Yeah. Right. Right. Do we? Do yeah, we I was going to say, how do we do this without having the states? The state information has nothing to do with this. Well, I mean, it, it does. It gives us the bottom line right. so we can see how much overall, you right. know, you can see. I gave you a little note here on the right of the difference. So, how much but the state sets the homestead and the non-residential tax rate for schools, so we have no say in that. Well, have they well done you do that? have a say because you pass the school budget. Well, how, how have they done that? 
because they haven't got the homestead, they haven't set the rate yet. No, no, they set the rate. The state set the rate already. They sent it oh. to us. This is the state oh. tax rate. Oh. Got the homestead, we've got that set amount of money that's got to be paid. Yeah. Whether the state gets in, the taxpayer gets reduced. I mean, the, the money's, they have to be paid, but it's just to be that different, you know. Well, I thought because you didn't do the homestead declaration stuff until July 15th, mm -hmm. that the state was not going to be able to do them calculations. No, they set the tax rate based on the school budget that you passed and what your grant oh, list okay. is that they submitted. Mm -hmm. um, how that moves us up is we'll talk about next is how it how it messes with us putting out tax bills for people mm -hmm. that are like pay early. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm. Yeah, thinking. it'll be yeah. the next one. Okay. Yeah. I think we, we did pretty good to keep our CLA down to yeah. right around 105. Yeah. So that was Molly. Uh, I'll second. We, yes. Did we have a second? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. We hadn't yet, but now we do. All in favor? Aye. 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 I will just note that the town end is what I was recently going through today, that our, our anticipated was a penny higher at the town level. But on the flip side of that, the schools was anticipated a penny lower, and it's now a penny higher. So that's what I was going to ask. Is, wash, are we? So there is no savings, folks. So don't spend it that way. <laughs> Damn. So, yeah. So, don't get ahead of yourself. But overall, that's one of the smallest increases we've had in a while. Yeah. Yeah. This was a was growth in the grant list. And we took care of the spring, well, and we took care of half of the spring flood. We took a lot of money right there. Or more than that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Any more equipment? Anything else in regards to the tax rate? And then um, the discussion to move um, August 15th tax date back to September. So because the homestead declarations are not due until Wednesday, um, last time I talked to Louise, or Louise came in, we're, we're still missing like 10%, I think, of our list. We're missing like 100 people that had to file their homestead declarations. So first of all, we can't get the tax bills out. I'd have to get them out tomorrow, so that's never going to happen anyways. But we would have to wait. Um, so what would happen is we mail out 100 or so tax bills that we know aren't right because they haven't filed their homestead. Then you get the homestead download, and then you have to send the just in tax bill. And this goes on. Sometimes there's a back and forth. And so it takes a lot of time, and people get very confused, you know, about how many bills. So our, because this is what the state allowed you to do because of COVID, because this is their fault. If they had every home, we could have filed our homestead declarations on time. But because they pushed it, I think it pushes us out. So, but I think you keep September, and then you keep November, February, and May the same. Don't set the whole schedule, don't change the rest of the tax year. Just gives people that instead of paying in August, um, or in May, yeah, 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 you have an extra month and then you gotta pay two months. two months. But I don't think it would just confuse the heck out of people, I think, if we change, change the entire schedule. And I did talk to the you know people in the office and like, should we stay with the fifteenth or should we go with like the fifth of September? And they're like, no, stay with the fifteenth across the board. Yeah. So just really monthly. Now, still, any, any, well, because we are pushing it a month and we have to pay school on time, any, any money that we may have to borrow, the state is still doing a zero percent. They said that they interest pay. loan on that. Right? They not no. They're going to reimburse or us reimburse we interest we pay. But okay. you've always had to pay the school in full by the end of the year. No, no. I'm just saying, being that we're so. moving this, we're obviously going to be paying money that we probably don't have. Right, so you're going to have, that's why it tends to be every time. But we will, overall, it should come out of the wash. Yeah, it will have to, what I'm not sure is how they expect us to quantify. Well, if we had a tax, we've always borrowed a tax anticipation note because we had to pay the school money we had to collect it. So, yep. I, I'm not sure. Take I'm just all interest is there. How about it? Take all the interest. <laughs> all the interest <clears throat> so, well, yeah, I don't know how it works out, but we should be made whole. I would like to do so. But yeah, so that's the plan, is then if we pass the tax rate, then we wait, you know, until, until the 15th, and then as Judy knows, it'll trickle in slowly, and I think to this, I don't know, do you know, Judy, what they have decided about the homestead 
are we going to be able to penalize people for late filing after July 15th? I don't know the answer to you. I'm not sure, but I don't think we'd be able to. I don't think so. Because they, they already extended it. Three I months. know, when it's filed. So I'm thinking they may say, I'll have to look, because I'm curious too. Yeah, right? I think. Mm -hmm. I would assume we could, but you know what a sign gets us. Yeah. So anyway, so what we would do is we would put the tax bills out. Obviously, they have to be out for at least 30 days prior. So we would put them out probably around August 10th. And um, that way, everybody has some time, and hopefully we've picked up as many declarations as we can. So I would entertain a motion to move the August 15th tax date to September 15th. And all these sequential tax dates from there will be as already voted on the county date. So there will be no changes in those. Second. Okay. Moved move it. When we second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we have the tax anticipation borrowing note. Okay. When is the state going to send our town the check for current use months? We get them throughout the year. And they don't want a big, one big check? No, we get the homestead declaration money in one big check. Okay. So the homestead declaration money is the money that we give people credit for on their tax bills. That comes in one big lump. So that comes in a big chunk in July, and then another piece will come, they come later as they file. Current use, it comes much later because um, there's a whole per parcel thing, and it may come in one lump sum, but it's a while. And actually, we're still, there's still a little issue with current use files it's on this data, and not our listeners on this data. But, um, do you have a question about current use? I'm just trying to think of a way we can get some more money in the top is. Oh, well, the state pays us when the state pays us. Coin drops. So that's not their state. Open the beer stand. Yeah. Coin drops. For all. I think that we saw $100,670 came July 6th, July 15th. Anybody have any questions in regards to the tax anticipation note? No. Pretty good interest, isn't it? So you'll have to make a motion to accept the resolution first. That's why it's This might not be a big deal, but on the first page of the resolution, one, two, three, four, five things down, um, there's just a blank and it says 2019. Yeah, no, that's what he's talking about. Okay, I'm cool. Good. Good. I have 7-1 there, but I'm not sure that's right. I have to double check it. Right? So that's just referring to the last yes, one. Yes, yeah, I have that on the screen, so I have to double check it. I have to double check the date. That's the last one signed. I knew I had an issue and I was looking for it while Dave was asking, so I wasn't yeah. close enough attention. <laughs> First, I'll need a motion to accept the resolution for the tax anticipation environment. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second will be to make a motion to accept the tax anticipation note of 300000 
and you have to authorize the chair oh, yeah. to sign. That's why I need the resolution. Yeah, so the resolution is for all of us and then the... Uh, yep. Yeah. That's why Bob did it that way. So motion to accept what was the second one for The tax anticipation note itself. Okay. And, and to authorize the chair to sign. I'll move that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So these are and then just thinking out loud, what we granted we do short term short term borrowing mm -hmm. um, throughout the budget season. Do we ever or do we have a handle on what what interest we pay a year on short term borrowing if so? Yep, it's in your budget. We actually there's a budget line for it. I don't have to. Nobody drawn a blank of where that's at in the budget line. Down the very bottom of your budget status reports, where it shows the debt that we pay. So it's part of the short term it's, debt. It's down, it says interest, like TAM anticipation. Okay. Interest. I think it was like. Okay. So you have to sign this, and then you pass the column, and you have to sign. That's the nice thing that you can keep zooming in. Is it right side up at least? <laughs> That's his problem. He's bringing it upside down. Make it bigger, baby. Make it bigger. Do you ever try this? It doesn't work this way. <laughs> All right, we got about 20 more minutes and we're out of here. More. Sounds coming. <laughs> well, <I don't> <laughs> we can leave when it gets to Lindley and I. All right. All of a sudden, Dave starts moving closer and closer to me. Well, we better go to the master. That's the crazy thing about cutting a thumb, you have no feeling in. At least this time I don't even have to worry about like, being in the dark in here. You know? That's true. <laughs> in the wintertime, even with the lights on, it's kind of dim in here. Just get sleepy. Well, not anymore. Last thing you worry about. Right now. Yeah. I hope we're not going to be here till it's dark. <laughs> I don't know. we got a couple more to talk about. We've got a ways to go yet. Any others? Anyone? 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 Tax anticipation borrowing or the note itself, so we all good. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we have the state revolving loan fund for the water project, which right now, well, that, I have only one question, and it's not exactly about this, but it is, is we ran a whole bunch of unseen things. What's that doing for $20 million? It's not doing anything to our 2.8 million. What it's going to do is push us possibly into next year so that we would add, um, finish, so that we need to get to town hall and then we may have to call it quits right here and then start again. Because we're going to run out of money or run out of time? No, it doesn't run out of time. So we, so well, we don't have, know that yet. We're still so pushing. Is that just covered within that budgeted number? Well, because they, yeah, I mean, it's still covered because they haven't, um, the only thing that we've added in there there has been some um, storm drain, right? where it just go with like tile, and so it's just really crumbles. So in a couple places, what we have done is we have um, cut it on one end and just laid new AC, you know, new pipe in, and um, and naturally that's still covered in the in the in the because there's a contingency, which obviously we're trying not to go into. But so do we have? Um, I don't know if that's not this, but I could ask this question. So do we have this college and Elliot giving us an as a belt? Is there somebody coming on site and seeing what we're doing? Oh, there's somebody there all the time. Yeah, Aldrich Elliot uh, Rick is there all day, okay. every day. Um, Tim Thompson, obviously, he's made maps and we've seen the work he's done before. So yeah, they will be all very completely as built with photos and each where the line is a uh, new um, uh, a service line going to the house will be, you know, we'll know exactly where it is and we can take all the measurements. So there's going to be diagrams for every single connection and lot pictures of everything in the road. 
along with very detailed last levels. So the engineer in Collier's Penelope is going to be our insurance policy with this stuff that's getting done. Yes, yep, I mean, that's what you're paying for. That's part of the fee of methods to oversee the construction. That, and certainly, Tim has been you know, involved in making some decisions and figuring some stuff out as they go. And um, so that's the way it works. I don't know if you've been answering trees, but uh, are they GPSing every joint connection? You know, so if no, you go, they, not. they aren't. So, so in other words, we are going to guesstimate where it is, right? Well, they do it by stations. Okay. You know, when they at the bottom of the plans, everything is done in stations. Okay, but, so we'll be able to locate things on the map. And okay, then, but it's not, G, it's not GPS. It is not GPS. And we, we did talk about that, actually. Yeah. That was something they had talked about early on. Um, but um, I'm not sure if it was me or prior to me when they were having those but yep. discussions early on. But we will have maps and have right. everything. Photos so that you know exactly. Right. Here's a connection and I can see that building. So things are going to be, you know, that I'm way. I'm just saying that because a lot of times mm -hmm. GPS is a quicker way to get to some place. Okay. And absolutely no, it, it's definitely an interesting, you know, we had that conversation actually like last week or, or a and a half ago. It doesn't matter to me either way. I was just No, curious. but you know that's it. So there's definitely pictures and they'll be very detailed as man yeah. built. So you should be able to, you know, locate it. We probably have a couple spaces and some ledge. And you can tell they get it before because the line might go here instead of going here. It's going one of these and then back across. You can tell they're trying to miss that piece of ledge. So. Yes. Yeah. We're obviously going to break them down. In a couple places, yes, we've had them. They brought them down. Just for clarity, this, the bond obligation here, this is not taking into account any of the other incentives, uh, like lead, the lead galvanized, right. so that, that's, exactly. they're handled separately. Right, okay. yeah, this is just taking advantage of the 0% interest for 40 years that they had promised us. You have to kind of start with the whole project, and then right. obviously we won't know what our galvanized, you know, subsidy is until the end. Right. Um, so I quantify, we also had an opportunity, um, where they had some, I don't know half, the state had some leftover, leftover money in a, in a fund, which at the, at the DWSRF, they had leftover money, it probably comes from the EPA if it And so we did submit to them a request, we did, our engineers did, that maybe, you know, you could appropriate that money to us. So let's say we get that money or additional money for the gal lead galvanized, does that then just drop our promissory, like our payment? Yep. Okay, so, the, so it gets factored in after, even Absolutely. though we're signing yeah. this now. So yeah, so then it all sugars out as to what we, what we end up with in the end. So gotcha. we know we got this portion, we know we got the 25% and then there was another percentage. Basically, I'm waiting for our, look. we're gonna get our grant from them, they need this loan document signed. So once we go through the bond bank, it goes back to the EWSRF, We'll have more information from there. Gotcha. So I'm hoping in another, I would say two weeks, but I'm going to say month, just because I'm not sure how quickly the state's working. We should have yeah. some more information about that. But yeah, they're tracking that. That's part of a spreadsheet that they track every you know, time they run into something. So this, so like the 33,800, yeah. that, that number could change. Yeah, very well, easily. yeah, because you okay. have to, <laughs> just like they had to vote on the entire 2.8 million, you have to do the bond for the entire 2.8 million. Mm -hmm. But we'll do next once we get the loan information. From. We'll also, if we have to, we can get a takeout bond anticipation note. But right now, I I send my stuff into DWSRF and they reimburse us, so we may not have to do that. Cool. Okay. So on the okay. schedule, you'll see that you know with the bond we had to, well with the bond we voted for two point eight million dollars of work. You'll see on the payment schedule that you know the the. You know, it's roughly 50% that we were kind of guaranteed that it was going to get forgiven. Mm -hmm. uh, that's already been shown up on here, and I believe that takes that $33,985 payment to. Yeah. So that payment probably will be adjusted based upon oh, any of these extras. Right they take it out at the beginning of the principal yeah. forgiven as the $1.44 million. But as we get going, if we, you know, Anything the one for one matches, or if we qualify right. for any extra money that was yeah. left over, then that payment. Yeah. Just drops, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Or you know, I don't know. I mean, or or like we had talked about before, I mean, you could probably make the same payment and you could shorten the term. Shorten the term. Because right. one thing on that was that we could pay additional yeah. 
principal at any time. So. Yep, that's one thing mm -hmm. we can talk about. Yeah. Right. But right now we'd be set up as though we're paying the whole lot of amount this is how much the payment's right. going to be. Yeah. yeah, and I guess I was thinking about it earlier more in line with like understanding we could pay more, but also knowing that we've got some other big, big ticket items that we're looking at biting off soon, and so lessening one low payment makes those yeah. a little mm -hmm. more viable. You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. kind of looking yeah. at it from that balance. It was kind of the same thing when we uh, when we get predicted what the water rate increase would be. Yeah. That was also using what so that we would potentially get, but it doesn't account for all these extras if we do. Right. One for one match and get some extra money, yeah. then that rate would be adjusted as well. Yeah, but based right. on what we knew we were guaranteed to get. Right. Right. So right. that, that could help kind of level out the, the water yeah. rate. Yeah. So, yeah. so what do you need from us? Motion? So you need to make uh, a <coughs> motion to. Uh, motion to. So you signed the loan agreement. Yeah, okay. motion to approve the loan. revolving loan fund. In the amount of 2.8 million at a zero percent uh, rate, yep. and maturing August 1st, 2016. Mo will still be on the board then. Yeah. <laughs> Chair. <laughs> including that. No. <laughs> so. All right. right. And You're including have to the exhibit C and resolution and certificate. Exhibit D. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. So these are all tabs. There's one where there's Chris signs, there's a couple where there's some clerk signs, but there's a few that you all sign. So but they're all tabbed in either. Oh, yeah. So in other words, if. Uh, Chris is liable for this? <laughs> yeah, it's all Chris's fault. This is Chris's water main. What are you saying? <laughs> Chris's bump outs, Chris's water main. <laughs> Great, Chris's water main. That's right. We'll call this the Jarvis water main. Well, come 2060, it's probably about when we'll start taking it up again. Yeah. Yelling at the ground, right? <laughs> Culture treasure. Yeah. Teresa's language needs exhibit C, et cetera, et cetera. I think it'd be good if you don't mind just taking it off the. Uh, here we'll cover all of our bases uh, instead of having to read every single thing. So this sheet here just it just says that's the part for Pam. That's for Pam, the borrower's authorization yeah. signature. That's Pam. Mm -hmm. And that's Pam. That's Pam. Okay. I think there's about three spots. Are you giving okay. you?
first time we talked about it? Yeah, yeah. we tabled it last time. So um, both Michael and Bill Crossman were there, and then the question came up about the rails, and then so I talked to a couple, you know, people in the state about it because they don't now, and we need rails, and then um, so I talked to them, and they said that that we could use either Jersey barriers or, um, and I reached out to Dylan and just asked him because it's his the original, you know, it's from the Pinello, and he said, you know, trees. Pick the both sides, put them on either so I still have the railing from Pinello. So he said that the overarching drill can just reattach what he has, you know, along the sides. So I was like, perfect. And then yeah. I just asked him for a number. He said, oh, I have 1500, two grand max. I was like, all right, I'm gonna throw two in there and just put it on the seat. So um, it is funny because that's kind of steep when you come down, it's icy, but it's not. I mean, it's, you know, it's 13,000 or less, or 600, yeah. I mean, it's one of 
those things. So if we get it done, then. Personally, I'd like to do this and then petition to take back a trail. You want, to, you want to throw it out? Yep. Once we get it done. This site board has the right to do that. Right. There's some others, too, that we talked about. Exactly. Mirrors and a mm -hmm. couple other small ones. There's a whole bunch of them out there that are basically driveways to somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah, that's what Mo said. Yeah, well, basically, the Pan Am is just the same. Is that situation. something that the class four committee would look at and make recommendations and then come to the board with, or do we just? What was it, three or four years ago, Chris, that we had, the committee was supposed to get started up again to look at this? Yeah. And I don't think they ever I mean, originally the committee got started up because we went from ancient roads to uh, class four roads. Right. Where yeah. we, had to, we had a period of time to adopt class four roads because if not, they were all going. Yeah, ancient roads, you're right. And so that was, what, three years, that four was years ago? That was probably, probably, probably Greg was longer. Here. Yeah. When Greg was here, we got the committee come in, remember? Yeah. Yeah. And they haven't met yet because of COVID, but I do have a note because I want them to start at our bases and figure out where that class four road is that goes from there and up that, um, cause he agreed to give us an easement on it, he built on it, um, but it's not called out in his deed. There's no easement in his deed. But we did talk about that. And so there's a couple places that we wanted them. The other thing that Slug Board had talked about was having them look at class four roads to determine maintenance. And they're like, Ooh, that's a lot of fun roads. They weren't sure they could get to them all, but um, so we just, uh, once COVID was kind of, what are we going to do? It's a matter of getting that group back together. And, and um, so I have it on my list of things to do to reach out to them and see if we can't schedule, they can't schedule a meeting to start. But actually, I think it's the select board's purview. We've thrown, we've thrown up roads before. And um, there's a process to it. You have to warn a, you have to meet there at the road, and as, as um, Mo knows. And um, so there is a process that you could certainly um, come up with a list. I'm not trying to deter from people building on that. I, no. I think if we throw it up and then it can be a private driveway, whoever wants to build that in on there. And, and, and it's not like you're looking to throw up a road that has 50 houses on it. You're looking right. at maybe like one or... Because we've got a couple on Camp Brook that are class fours, but there's more than one residence on them. Mm -hmm. And they maintain their own road. They do. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because you have like... When I remember doing Pinello, so Pinello was class three. I remember reading, I read all the adoption stuff, and so they made that a class three. But yet, when you go down below, you have Mitchell Bridge, and that's not. And I'm like, well, how can one be one and not the other? So it was. Oh, <laughs> you knew, yeah. But yeah, so uh, so I agree with all. I think that the big thing is I, I hope they realize that people are going to come up and turn around their driveway because that's it. Class four road. Yeah, they know. Well, then they drive through. I mean, I think he was telling us on Zoom how many they pull out each year with their cars and somebody gets stuck. We did put a no outlet sign. Um, I did have Alan do that because we have the same problem at the end of Hooper Hall. Um, crazy, they drive past um, Robert Frank's house. I mean, I, it's pretty obvious. It's just a drive. They try to get to Rochester. Maybe that's how the GPS is. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like that commercial right? years ago where the guy drives into the pond or lake, remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's how the... Yeah, it's very much like uh, that. Hooper Hollow was a road that goes down to two residences in Bethel. Yeah. And one was a million dollar hex. The only way you can get to it is coming in from Rochester. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny because um, I just, at what point do you look up from your computer and realize you're heading down the Garage, but I couldn't believe how many times that happened there. The other day, I, it's nuts. we was going up to my uh, grandson and my great grandson's birthday. So just I, I knew where I was going, but I didn't know the last little bit. And I plugged in the GPS coordinates. Down the end of the driveway, turned left to the water river. <laughs> that road hasn't had a car on it in 60 years. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that road even has a road. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. But well, that is class four road in the town of Yeah, it's funny. So, but I think you're right. I think there are a few places that the that you should look at. Either next. trail or throw up. Well, that was like yeah. the first time I was on that one over on <laughs> Southwest. Yeah. Oh, where are we? Oh, we that literally was a fringe fair. Fair, yeah. This is I mean, that was fair. like, is there even a house? I even drove out there with my truck. I had a hard time getting out there. I mean, we're all trying to get this full size of truck the whole way, and I get out there and she's talking to the lady in the car. I'm like, yeah, get out of here. He's like, what, you drive a monster truck? I'm like, how did she get up here? I mean, it was crazy. So, you're right, and there's... Yeah, 
And that was class three, bro? It was class three. We actually graded it. I'm like, is this class three? And so we did. We put the grader out there because of that. And um, But I agree with Mo. I think that they're an asset. And I think that we need to, to do something. I mean, obviously, they're not all going to be perfect tomorrow. But we need to maintain them. They're an asset. And we need the tax base. From, from the boys' house, they were even four wheelers that were going to have a hard time getting up over that ledge. So, yeah, I mean, there's no reason that we should we should just throw it up. Yeah. I believe, if I'm correct, they own land on both sides of the road, so it wouldn't be a dispute. Yeah, right. should be a problem. Mm -hmm. I, but you're right, there's several. Uh, you're right, we can make a list. We should figure out which ones they are. And Every road in the town of Bethel occasionally was laid out for a rod and a half. Really? Yep. And if you look at your stone wall, it's lit up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. Well, horses take a lot of space. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, they, they had to meet two horses. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think the only food. concern that I have on the whole Spooner Road is it, it's just the cost of it. And, um, yeah. I mean, I know we talked about more last time about class four roads and things like that. But you know there is enough language in our class four road policy that basically gives it you know, whatever we want to do. We don't have to do anything. If we want to bring a grade up there, we can. If we don't, then we don't bring it. Or I think you know if this was we're just talking about putting one stick of pipe in, you know, a 24 inch pipe or something mm -hmm. for a thousand dollars, it's different. I think right now the only thing that keeps going is you know do we have to do it right now? Can we maybe apply for a you know, back roads grant or something to try and absorb some of the costs. You know, we do have Sand Hill, the, mm -hmm. I mean, the tattoo, well, we got Sand Hill, Christian and, Hill and the funds yeah. that we have. And all those roads are going to take big paving grants. And I, I know, but all we may be able to get a better back roads. I, I wrote a structures grant. I have a plan to write another structures grant. We may be able to. Um, for me, it's like I, if you have to triage, which I think is where we're at now, Obviously, all the bigger projects, Christian Hill, um, Sand Hill, these things we want to leverage grant money for, structures grants will be bridges. It's like, is there a better use of the money? Like, for, for $13,600, are we going to write a better back roads? Is there a bigger project where we can get more money, I guess? Yeah, but like, usually, like, better back roads, you know, they're kind of small. They're, they're, like they're capped. Like, they might only give you 10000 at the most. Yeah, they're limited. Usually, it's like $2,500 or 5000 And I think you're going to have would probably apply, my guess would be, I mean, it took me, God, I think we must have done that, I think four or five times to get it on a class three road. So I'll be curious to see how you go to class four, but I are there, are there any uh, grants out for preservation of class four or ancient roads? Not that I'm aware of. There was originally just some mapping money. Yeah. And, and I did talk to, yeah, there. I did talk to Jenner and we don't need a permit for this. That was a question too about getting the road. We don't need a are we putting any riprap in? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're dealing with the river bank then. He said we didn't need a permit. I asked oh, him. working in the river. Yeah, yeah I specifically asked him. That stone's going to land in the water. I know. He said no. And he went up there before. And he worked with the hydraulics. So, fishes. Um, so, and we reviewed the hydraulics too. Right. But I said, because I have the same thing. Like, we, I don't want to ask for forgiveness. I was talking about mine. Probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been up there though, so I don't know. I just so wish I mean, we were in a position where we could say, you know, next year or the year after we're going to replace it. You know, we still have East Bethel Bridge, we've got to figure out what we're going to do with that thing. That's got to get fixed before winter. Mm -hmm. um, and that pavement over there is getting tough shape too. So, so uh, yeah, terrible. I mean, it's just all, you know, we got all these little ones, and, you know, our luck is if we don't do anything, and something happens this winter. And yeah. You know, and well, if we do something, we probably get a date in another couple of years, you know, I mean, take you know. Yeah, it's hard to know. I mean, you don't, you know, someone else took a look at it, too, and they came in and they said, they must have heard us talking about it, and then they said, well, do you realize that? I'm like, yeah, we've been out there twice, yeah, we know what it looks like, and, and uh, but you're right, I mean, let's, there's a bunch of things to do, yes, he's Bethel at 35000 trying to leverage something, and they have to pay 
that. It's got to be more than that. You well, know, no, that's what I'm saying is I probably have to pave it short term to get me out so that I can do another uh, structures grant. If I get watershed, then it would give me a couple years and hopefully do that one. And that's a bigger deal because in order to deal with the spalling that's on the water too, we need to, like the last time I saw it, it was like $183,000 price tag for the whole bridge. So that's a structures grant. Well, it's not saying with the East Bethel Bridge is it's only pretty much one way in, one way out, unless you take the go path. Like the Which, bridge. yeah, the fire. You can't do that in one No. Well, no. <laughs> well, and, and it makes it tough on the quote we've got to do work is you need yeah. to shut it down yeah, because to do a proper fix and it's costly. Yeah, so I have to leave it only no because the fire chief said there's no way I'm going to put the fire truck down there. So you can't. And then it's like, okay, can we leave a fire truck over there? Because we can't do anything to smile like something that makes Well, during the summer, a, a small truck can get down over the ice wall. Yeah, so, you know, but if it was a structure fire. So, these are all you can do is stand in and plug in the pump. Pump from the river. <laughs> Throw a pump in the river there. And so, yeah, we, um, right so, yeah, it's one of those situations. Obviously, there's plenty of stuff to be done. And, you know, we could certainly try to write a better backwards grant. I don't know when that's going to come out because they haven't given out that paving money yet. Um, but like I said, I wrote one for a few years on class three and it took me a while to get it. So class four, I don't know. State could be, could the state meeting. could be tight on money now with this COVID thing because they are losing revenue, so they're going to be tighter with the purse strings. Yeah, last year they haven't even given up their payment. They, money they put the class grant money on hold this year, which yeah. now is pretty much it's not coming. So they're going to push it a year. Now. What payment grant money for this year? Yeah. So that they, they held everything. Oh, yeah. So that puts us even a further year behind yeah. trying to get our payment. No, he, he was growling before. He'd be growling again. Christian, no. Anything. Anything. Right. So well, I guess at this point, we'll get to that. I know, that's a whole other story for next time because I, I need to get more numbers before I can. You can't, you can't pay this in. Can't pay this in. I don't plan on paying Well, that's what we're saying. That's why I, if you, yeah, that's why I said I didn't bring the, the plan back tonight because we're still working. Uh, we're trying to make infrastructure. Chris is going to come up with a page number, you know, so we, we'll have a better number. But no, no, we're not doing Sand Hill unless we, we're going to upgrade the water line and the storm drains and just make it easier. Yeah, the storm water. Yeah. Water and storm water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sewer is good. Yeah. So I, I guess at this point, um, you know, I would need a motion if we want to move forward uh, with the Spooner Road culvert repair not to exceed $13,600. And because of it, it's kind of more of a design build, you know, that piece would be, uh, we would hire North Road Excavation to do the work. Well, they also had the Pinella deck. So well, that's what I said. It's like a design build. It's kind of like a yeah. As long as the money does not come out of the uh, highway equipment. No, it doesn't. It comes yeah. out of the money. Would, not the equipment. money would come out of the, uh, would come out of the, uh, Capital work. Capital work. Yeah. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <coughs> Did, uh, the other thing, do you have a timetable on when you, if, now that we approved it, when you do it? Or? I haven't asked him yet. He got, I, because he's still finishing. He's still working on it. He's doing the FEMA. Yeah, he's doing the FEMA now, and then um, he has to go back and do some final grading when the state park is done. And I think you said it would be done. I can't remember how much longer they're going to be on the line. But I'm not sure it's not. Any further discussion on Spooner Road? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, just to, in the end of that discussion, and it always seems like whenever we ask, whatever we call fourth road group to do some things, you know, there's always something that comes up or, you know, maybe yeah. falls apart or, you know. Yeah. But we probably ought to look at trees, certain roads in the town that maybe have very limited functions at this point that maybe could be reclassified. Like, well, that's like for instance, Thayer, yeah. Thayer, Thayer, Thayer is a class three, that well, probably should be a class four. Well, that's what you're saying. We have some that are fours that maybe should just be yeah. thrown up. Yeah. Or there might be some on the opposite end that maybe should be fours and yeah. threes, you know. Well, that's what I was saying, Mo, you could take a look at a couple, but maybe Mo, we could sit down and talk about that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
sit down and maybe Well, the first one is the Oxbow. We all make that a class four because we're getting paid class three money for it right now and we don't plow it in the winter. Yeah. Well, you, you can still get, you can still get class three money. You don't have to pay, we don't have to plow it to nope. make class three, but there's very, but there's requirements about class three, but I bet they're not making it. So, but you know, if you guys to maybe, you know, sometime between now and, I mean, what do we have to get through? You know, we have the town plan coming for well, budget season. We have the uh, trash ordinance to get through. But we could probably work on. Well, maybe what Mo and I could do is sit down maybe next week or some point and sit down and look at the, the town highway map. Right. And then we could break it up into sections and kind of look at a couple places. Like there's a couple we know right now, and there's going to be a couple more that we don't. So. There's a whole okay. section from a uh, uh, guy who just died there, uh, Bay Lumba. Mm -hmm. There's two roads just beyond this place that fork. One comes down to uh, uh, the road. Uh, up. Is he on Gilead? Yeah, Dave Lumba? Yeah, Dave Lumba Road. One comes down by uh, Doug Marshall's. Uh -huh. And the other one comes out on to, what's the name of that road? The foot of Rochester Mountain. It turns off to the right. Oh, yeah. uh, Charlie Wilson? Charlie Wilson. Yeah. Charlie Wilson will ties right in with Dave Long because I've driven it. Yeah, so I think, you know, we just start looking at them and, and um, figure out who's where and how many. It'll take us a while to get through them all, but. It's a, it's a procedure, and you've got to have a meeting with them. Oh, wow. Everybody that lives or owns land in there is going to holler. And yeah, they are. And some may not. I will say, I think there's some people who are just as happy we stay out. Like, they're maintaining it now. Well, it's basically, going, that it's basically going to their woodlot. Yeah. A lot of them. But instead of bringing up road by road, it'd be nice to establish a list and yeah. then, and then if we decide to, you know, whatever, we have five roads that we decide yeah. at the same time and we're going to change classifications. Mm -hmm. or, well, we can take a look at the whole town map and then kind of do it section by section and then, yeah. you know, it'll take a while to get through. But um, we could break it down by quadrants like we did for the FEMA work and, mm -hmm. you know, each year for the next four or five years we could Go look at one quadrant yeah. and see see what roads mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're all fine or yeah, I think that's maybe good some, you have some of those roads that are yeah. part class three and part class four. Yeah. Or, so yeah maybe next week we can do that while we'll sit down and we'll take a bath and then I can do some coffee with this guy and he's right for the squadron on fours and we'll say we'll look at this section go section by section. Yeah, we can. To help. I'm busy this week. I got to work at the transfer station. Yeah, no, I'm busy this week too, so that'd be great. Yeah, no, so next week we'll figure out time. Not work, volunteer. That's right. It's keeping people straight. All right. And then we had next up the uh, equipment committee recommendations to purchase one of the two new trucks that we need. Yeah. So we um. So we had obviously been started the equipment committee, so the only one who wasn't present was Jeff Gilman, and um, we had basically AJ Packard had asked him, they had gone through some parameters of what they wanted, we put out specs a little bit, and then um, AJ ended up going and looking at at least three vehicles, three, three right, yeah, and taking a look at them, and he drove a couple, and then um, to try to figure out what it is, you know, what the need was. We obviously know that we had two freight liners that were going to, you know, come out at the same time, which we want to get away with, get away from and stretch. So um, we, so AJ had gone and looked at um, vehicles and then this one in particular was the one, their first recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> the committee agreed um, to recommend it. It's already built. It comes with a really good extended warranty to the point that if the truck breaks down and they cannot get it repaired and it's a snowstorm within, you know, that day, they will bring us a loaner. The other thing is here is two years of virtual tech service. It says it's included. After that, it's only one hundred and ten dollars a year. What happens is, um, say say um, AJ breaks down, it actually sends out an alert and it goes to Detroit and then they kick it over to them. They will go find him and they and it's on the and they it includes the road service. They fix it. They bring the parts and if that's all the parts is under warranty, that's all included for that one hundred and ten bucks. A year. So we obviously knew this truck had a couple of bells and whistles on it that maybe you wouldn't have gotten respected out, but due to COVID, uh, you're, there's a huge you know, break in what we can, the lead time what you can get in the lead time. We're actually, our next meeting that we haven't scheduled yet, we're going to move forward with 
specking out, uh, you know, nailing down the spec so that we can go through the process of building our own truck. But we, but we have to be, we're going to be two years out and we have to start the process already because they're saying we don't have trucks, they're on back, you know, backward, and if who knows what COVID's going to do this winter. So, so ideally, so, normally, we would like to see a three or four year gap in between. Well, we'd like trucks, to. So, yeah. If well, we, this truck has got an eight year warranty. So if we buy this one, I'm just trying to think right now, if we buy this one for this coming season, that we should get nine or ten years out of it. That's what we're saying. We feel, if you look at this, and then the next one we're going to buy would be another, it's going to be to replace the next freight liner. But are we looking to nurse that a little bit and push that one? Yeah, as you can see right here. Right out? Yeah, so, so we're I'm looking, looking at it. Yeah, we're looking at purchasing this one here and then we're looking at trying to go. 2022, well, it looks like you're only two years. We're, it is okay. only two, and we might try to get. It's really right. going to depend what that truck is doing at that time. And if you look at the note at the bottom, we said we would try to. We're going to put the trucks in an eight-year rotation, mm -hmm. of the equipment in a 20-year rotation, and then I'm assuming a trade of, you know, of a certain amount. But I also was trying to level off the um, our how much we had to appropriate. So, but yes, we we only have a couple of years in right. between. And if we can stretch it, then we will we will do that. That is but I Trace will correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we, we extended the greater up to a twenty twenty six. Yeah, I think that's so, uh, yeah, it is. It's yeah. twenty because we just put, you know, money into it. There's still okay. skill that needs to get they didn't fix that we need to have done. But once it gets through grading, we're gonna we'll get the seal done too. But um but yeah. Actually they, actually they repaired it for cheaper than they estimated. Yeah, but they also didn't do that seal, which they asked about, so that's going to have to go back, but but it was it was cheaper. So we're trying, so this is the great thing about, this is a, several reasons are great about the equipment committee. One is they know what the heck they're talking about because they have equipment, so they're familiar with stuff. The other thing is you can do this, or you can try to project. Obviously, you're going to play with some things in between. The other thing it does is it gives people with expertise and equipment to may help you make the decisions, to make the recommendations. I can have the money, but they know what they're looking at, what they're building, and what they're going to get. So they're the perfect people to recommend in the select board. We do. When we ask them, are you willing to stand up if it comes up at town meeting? And they're like, yep. So. Now, we had allocated some money to do additional repairs to the equipment, yep. bar blades and all that kind of stuff yep. a while back. Yep. And that's so, in so the one that we're trading in, um, we've already spent that that money to do those upgrades and whatnot. If it was on that equipment, it wouldn't have yeah. been. But we're also keeping that fog blade because it will fit, you know, the other oh. truck. Oh, okay. We have two identical trucks, so one of them we're keeping. And you can see where I put in the equipment for repairs or um, here on the spreadsheet. The right. No, I didn't realize you were keeping them. Keeping we're keeping that. one of them. We're yeah, keeping, they, were, they were all new plow blades. Yeah, we're right? keeping, um, yeah, we're keeping AJ's truck. Yep. We'll get rid of Jason's. And then, but yeah, there's a couple of good plow blades You know, just looking at the schedule, it would be nice if we, the other freight liner, some, I mean, let's, you know, hope it holds together long enough. Yeah. That would be nice to be able to push that out at least another year, if not two. Because if you push that out, you know, let's assume that it's running correctly. Because mm -hmm. you'll see in 2026 20, right now, yeah. You know, we're going to be running a pretty large deficit for that one or two year period. Yeah. Where if you're able to push that other truck out a year or two, you're going to cover almost all that yeah. deficit. Well, what we may end up having to do is we may end up having to, well, the, the trade will come down. Right. Well, the trade will come down, so right. you're still going to spend the same money the sooner. But what we may be able to do too is we may end up making a down payment on the greater and not buying it outright. You know, we just don't know yet. So obviously, we're trying, and that is the goal, is obviously we'll push. It as long as we can. Um, unfortunately, I think if it had been the truck to do the job originally, you would be in a better shape than you are right now. Right. But the one ton, you'll do something with the one ton. The one ton is sitting doing right now. Right. 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 That can works. Well, <laughs> we're not doing anything. Might as well. <laughs> we're not doing anything with it until possibly next year. We've slated some money right. next year to see, and but right now it's kind of they're nursing along, and the equipment committee said, man, nope. I've waited my year to see what happens. I think if it's used appropriately, you'll get a few more years.
use out of that. Yeah, there was a couple you of can't. issues. It was a general consensus that if you buy a new one, there's going to be no wing on it. There's going to be a truck with a plow and yeah, which basically is doing that. Except yeah, this right. one, remember, this frame has been welded twice. So that's the only issue. Well, was, but there were other issues. There were times there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, Both of us stand and offer for a scrap for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, a 15 foot plow on it either. Man, yeah, it was way over the yeah. equipment. Should have never had that on it. Yeah. And, and plowing the toughest room. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we're certainly, um, you know, certainly looking at that and I will say that these uh, guys were given time on this committee are certainly frugal. So, um, and they've actually given some very good suggestions to Alan and AJ about where they can get stuff repaired, where to try this, look at that, do this, deal with it. You know, that's the simple, all of that has come to play. But it's nice because it doesn't put you guys in the weeds. This is a group of people that know they're going to make their own we need a motion? Yeah, you need a motion to approve the purchase for it to come out of the um, capital equipment fund and to authorize myself to sign all the documents. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, I think the equipment committee has been a, you know, an excellent idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, just so many years, well, it wasn't so much, you know, that we had a lot of changing faces in town, but you know, you bought something like, you know, the sidewalk plow, you know, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, yeah, why did you buy that? It's not, you know, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say it wasn't was a lot of thought put behind it, but it was a lot of pieces of equipment that really didn't suit our needs. At the end of the day. It seems like now that having a say from a wide range of different educated individuals is a uh, better. I'm a firm believer of people using them want to be the ones to check them out to make sure it's what you want. So when, so when would we see the purchase, or when would we see the new truck at? Or? I don't know, I'm going to call the guy. If I call them to make sure they still had it, and then I will have to call them tomorrow, and then I'm not sure. They had it on the lot, didn't they? Yeah, it's on the lot, so I'm not sure how long. Chris, there'll be a parade through town with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Chase, let me drive it in. We can all go up the town garage and, and celebrate. <laughs> so I'll have to take a look. Uh, so I don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so rides on the back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's all I have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further on that? Town manager report?